Welcome everybody. Good morning and thank you for attending this uh, this workshop. So this is the fourth and last workshop uh, for the outcome uh, uh, outcomes for the open call to uh, experiments of SF4 UHPC uh, project. So uh, we have uh, the agenda for today we will start by uh, an introduction by made by my colleague Tina then we have uh, uh, seven presentations which according to this uh, to this agenda so I I let the floor to Tina to introduce uh, the project and then we will move for to the first presentation if Marjan is here if not we, we can move to the second uh, uh, presentation. Tina, please. Sure. Good morning, everybody. So, can I get the yeah. right to share, please? You have it. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So, let's see. So, hopefully, you're seeing the screen now. Yes. Good. So, um, good morning again, and welcome at the fourth um, FF4 Euro HPC uh, Success Stories webinar. Uh, so today, before we are heading to really interesting presentations, just giving you a really brief introduction uh, about the project. So FF4 Euro HPC is actually a successor of the previous Fortissimo projects and is H2020 uh, research project coordinated by HLRS and supported by five, five other partners, Arthur from Slovenia, CSGA from Spain, Cineca from Italy, Scapos from Germany and Teratech from France. So the the main aim of the FF4 Euro HPC project is actually uh, to promote the use of HPC AI and other relevant technologies and uh, most of all implementation of these technologies for business and gaining some uh, business uh, aspects and uh, opportunities for European SMEs. So our, let's say, first aim is to increase actually the innovation potential of European industry. We are focusing in particular on SMEs, uh, as mentioned, offering them the opportunity to take the advantage of the HPC technologies and um, further innovate in their business. But furthermore, we are also um, providing the access to the HPC state-of-the-art uh, supercomputer technologies uh, offered within uh, Europe uh, and uh, some of the um, success stories you will also hear the, today are actually supported with the national, national competence centers who are uh, providing uh, such of infrastructures. Um, then we are actually uh, focusing on promoting of the success stories and the success story is a story about the innovation, about gaining the business benefits and providing um, good impact uh, in all aspects, some from business also to environment and society. Uh, and actually well, our uh, main, let's say, purpose is to uh, tell the stories to um, actually provide this uh, enthusiasm for the SMEs to further uh, innovate in their business. And uh, lastly, um, we are actually providing um, um, mechanisms uh, through the open calls and funding support uh, to the experiments um and especially for uh, agile smes who can actually lower the barriers for the market entry and exploit new uh, business opportunities so uh, in the project there were two open calls offered uh, targeting the highest quality uh, smes uh, who then submitted their proposals 
uh, which were evaluated and uh, in total 42 experiments were selected for funding, were supported by the FF40 HBC project and are including 132 partners from 22 Euro HPCGU member states. Uh, on your right hand side you can see the map, so all these darker colored countries um, are actually, um, let's say, partners in these uh, experiments. So 62% of all are small and medium-sized enterprises uh, who are actually addressing their business challenges uh, and are implementing technologies in various industrial domains, but focusing on manufacturing as 57% of all are uh, addressing this sector. So as explained, the experiment uh, actually, uh, let's say, is um, gathered uh, from um, different participants. We have end user who is SME, then supported by the technology provider ISV, if this is the case, uh, and some other domain, uh, domain experts who are doing their best to address the business challenge, uh, implementing technology and getting uh, successful results. And as soon as experiment is successfully concluded, um, then it creates a success story. And this is our main, let's say, output of the project and is now communicated also in these webinars. Uh, so from the first trench, we got 16 success stories. Um, they are all accessible on our website and also presented in the first uh, success story booklet. You can easily achieve uh, reach to it on our uh, website. Uh, our colleague already put uh, the link in the chat, so uh, you're kindly invited to search for the stories, get inspired, and of course, the second tranche is on the way. So new success uh, stories are coming uh, soon and we will be really happy to share uh, these good um, results with you. Uh, so welcome and um, in, well invited on the project website, on our social media uh, and let's stay in touch. Um, good morning, everyone. I start with a general introduction and uh, to explain the reasons and the objectives of the experiment. Uh, then Alessandro uh, will go on with the description of the work done and uh, the results uh, obtained. Uh, so uh, let me give some information about the members of the team. Uh, CDR Pompe is the, an Italian SME, SME involved in the project, has been a developer uh, and producer of pumps for hazardous, corrosive and uh, highly pure liquids in the chemical, pharmaceutical and other process industries uh, since 1978. Um, unlike many other pumps manufacturer, uh, CDR is qualified and leader both for lined plastic uh, and metallic process pumps. Uh, the number of uh, employees of CDR is more than uh, 30 and now the research and development department consists of two people that are involved in the development and optimization of a new uh, and existing uh, products. Uh, EngineSoft is uh, one of the leading technology transfer companies in the field of simulation based engineering science. Uh, since uh, its foundation, in 1984, EngineSoft has always been at the forefront of technology, technological innovation. It is unique in its field, uh, having specific and advanced skills in all uh, disciplines in which uh, simulation technologies are used. Uh, EngineSoft has a very large experience to assist the customers to safety and effic effectively navigate, explore, and manage the vast and complex data obtained uh, from uh, both simulation and uh, physical testing. Uh, finally, Chineca as a host center and provider of uh, calculation uh, HPC. 
So the experiment HPC for a POP uh, is named high performance computing for performing optimized pumps uh, has been carried out to improve and optimize magnetic drive pumps uh, produced by uh, CDR Pompe uh, with the support of EngineSoft and Chineca uh, with the, the objective of uh, improving in performance and developing products for new markets. Uh, with this experiment, CDR desire to redesign four sizes of magnetic drive pumps uh, in order to improve product performance and reduce both engineering and manufacturing costs. Uh, this product line, the DTN, is uh, thought to be complied with uh, the American construction regulation and uh, with this product, CDR, CDR aims to deliver more efficient and more competitive products. Uh, so, uh, speaking about uh, magnetic uh, drive pumps, the main features are that uh, the motor is not connected directly to the pump, uh, but the power of the motor is transferred by magnetic couplings, uh, rather than uh, by a direct uh, mechanical shaft. Uh, the second feature is that uh, uh, is uh, completely hermetic, so there is no leakage of process, process fluid. Um, these features makes uh, this uh, kind of pumps uh, construction uh, suitable for hazardous, corrosive, and uh, high pure liquids, uh, so for chemical, pharmaceutical, and uh, other process industries, uh, because this kind of pumps eliminate the need for shaft sealing, preventing the leakage of hazardous fluids. Uh, on the other hand, the main, the main critical uh, aspect is to be uh, sensitive to axial thrust on the rotating parts. Uh, so it is essential that the thrust on the impeller and magnetic drive system uh, is balanced over the entire operating range of the machine. Uh, in this way, the load and stress could be minimum and uh, good operation conditions can be guaranteed. So, um, speaking about the market and the um, global situation, centrifugal pumps are widely used and consume a significant amount of energy. It is estimated that uh, around the 10% of the global electricity produced, in the, uh, produced uh, is used for pump uh, operation. Uh, this corresponding to uh, around 25% of all motor-driven energy. So improvements in the efficiency of centrifugal pumps would lead to relevant decrease in global energy consumption. Uh, from an end user perspective, there is a particular, uh, particularly important impact in uh, terms um, of life cycle costs. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, only around 10-15% of uh, a machine's total life cycle cost relates to the capital cost, while the 40% uh, relates to the energy used to operate the machine during the, its lifetime. Um, so the positive effect uh, reduced, reduced consumption also translates into reduced CO2 emissions, uh, which is the aim of the Green Deal launched by the, by the European Union. Uh, moreover, a better design for the magnetic, pump, magnetic drive pump uh, presents a fluid dispersion, uh, reducing noise and vibration, increasing the versatility, reliability, and the durability of the pump, uh, while requiring less planned and unplanned downtime and maintenance. So the improvement obtained with this experiment uh, will help uh, CDR to assess the uh, US market with uh, an expected growth in the company's annual turnover of uh, 1.5 million of euros uh, after a, a period of uh, five years. In fact, uh, CDR has uh, reached technical and efficiency advantages over its competitors 
in USA. Uh, that is the USA that is a, a, a such complex and large market. Uh, the pump DTN compliant with the American ASME standard uh, and uh, they are also suitable for the market of East Asia and Australia. Therefore, CDRs is uh, important and uh, real opportunity, opportunities to increase uh, sales also in these areas uh, in order to uh, a global expansion of uh, its market. So from the technical point of view, uh, CDR strongly desires to redesign four sizes of magnetic dry pumps uh, in order to improve product performances. Uh, CDR's machines were developed during the past decades uh, without uh, the support of modern uh, simulation technology uh, that is computer-aided engineering, uh, relying instead uh, on existing data obtained from the laboratory testing of, of prototypes, which has caused issues and uh, it is a time-consuming process, uh, meaning it is uh, of no help in today's highly competitive environment. Uh, the simulation tools the know-how and the HPC infrastructure uh, required uh, for uh, these um, design improvements uh, were not available for us for CDR. Um, in these experiments, in the, in the experiment, uh, CDR teamed up with engine software to employ CFD modeling and uh, optimization uh, for the four pump sizes to find the best compromise between uh, geometry fidelity accuracy and uh, computational costs. Uh, analysis and design of centrifugal pumps are uh, challenging targets uh, due to uh, very large, uh, very complex uh, geometry of mag drive pumps um, uh, from uh, first point of view. Uh, secondly, uh, for the large number of geometric parameters involved. However, the, uh, the optimization of the pumps requires many large models to be run on a, a, an HPC infrastructure. Nevertheless, uh, the HPC-based design uh, process cuts down time to market uh, by 15% uh, and allows to save money and uh, time producing uh, a large number of, uh, to, to produce a large number of uh, prototypes. Okay, uh, design and uh, optimization of the MagDrive pumps uh, can be done through a high fidelity parametric CFD model. Uh, in this case, using a commercial uh, ANSYS technology. Uh, for example, we used uh, um, ANSYS CFX and a designer design of experiment tools. Um, the um, uh, positive aspect uh, are um, that uh, uh, the, 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 this approach um, are at the state of the art for the fluid dynamic simulation. Uh, the results are uh, very accurate. Uh, then um, is allowed to use a, a sort of parametrization uh, so it's possible to carry out a design of experiment investigation. Uh, naturally, uh, as uh, said before, uh, it is a faster approach than the real test and experiment, uh, as I said before. Uh, negative aspect is that uh, high fidelity CFD simulation required accurate meshes and complex models, uh, so optimization requires many simulations to be run. Uh, coming back to the technical aspects of the experiment, um, together with Angisoft, decide, decided to, we have decided to uh, investigate seven geometric parameters of impeller. Uh, so um, this, these seven parameters uh, have been identified uh, as relevant inputs for the optimization study. So uh, they are uh, the leading edge position, the blade flow, flow angle, uh, the hub and the shroud curvature, the blade height, 
the recirculation channel diameter and uh, the back veins height. Uh, these uh, geometric parameters have an important effect on performance. Uh, in particular, the leading, leading edge position and um, uh, flow angle uh, uh, define the impeller inlet geometry and influence the optimization of incidence uh, to reduce the MPSH, so the cavitation of the pump. Uh, the blade height uh, is involved in, uh, to increase and reduce the operation, operating range uh, of the pump, so the uh, maximum flow, uh, and also the head. Uh, recirculation channel diameter uh, uh, is involved to optimize the recirculation flow, that is very important for um, drive pumps, and also to uh, reduce the MPSH. And uh, finally, the back veins height uh, influence the axial thrust optimization. The other parameters, uh, the, they are uh, the hub and shroud curvature, uh, have to be investigated uh, and optimized to avoid, uh, or, or reduce, to or, or avoid or reduce the flow separation. Uh, so the output parameters uh, identified that have been uh, considered uh, are the head uh, of the pump, that uh, is the energy, the pressure the, given by, to the fluid by the pump, uh, the efficiency, uh, that is the ratio between the positive, the positive effect, uh, so the head, and the mechanical power absorbed, uh, then the axial thrust and uh, the MPSH required of the pump, that is the measure uh, of the minimal pressure uh, of a fluid on the suction side of a centrifugal pump uh, in order for proper pump, pump performance and to eliminate the risk of cavitation. Uh, so the um, objective of, of the experiment are to minimize axial thrust and uh, MPSH uh, to, to avoid uh, early failure of the machine um, and uh, secondly, but very important, uh, reducing energy consumption, so uh, increase the efficiency of the machine. Okay, okay, thanks Luigi, I can go on for, for the engine soft part. Um, so, uh, as uh, Luigi said, uh, there were four pumps configuration provided by CDR Pompe to be studied and optimized. The work was divided into, into two phases. In task one, uh, the first geometry uh, taken as the baseline was uh, studied in terms of uh, the identification of KPIs especially for outputs and uh, uh, a sensitivity analysis on the CFD model was uh, done in order to understand um, uh, which was the uh, best setup for the next phase, the task two, uh, which was uh, related to the parameterization and uh, the design of experiment uh, and uh, then optimization of the geometries. So in the first task, uh, a sensitivity analysis was performed on the um, first uh, uh, Mac drive pump uh, by CDR. In uh, this case, uh, the sensitivity uh, was uh, uh, done especially on the mesh sides. So uh, many uh, meshes of the same geometry were uh, analyzed. But also there was, a, there was a sensitivity analysis on the turbulence model uh, in order to understand which was the best turbulence model to take into account of secondary flows uh, losses, uh, which are uh, very important in this kind uh, of pumps, uh, in, especially in the mag drive uh, section. Uh, the results of this, uh, of this first phase of uh, study during the project uh, was that uh, uh, in terms of uh, the thrust evaluation, which was the most critical uh, part uh, from, from CDR, uh, the differences, for example, between uh, uh, steady state and transient approaches in the CFD model decreased while increasing the number of elements in the mesh. So the mesh sensitivity was dominant compared to the algorithm taken into account for, for the simulation, but also uh, on the turbulence model sensitivity. Uh, 
We also tried uh, uh, different solvers in order to understand which was mm, the, the most efficient one, uh, but from this side we didn't have uh, a very much, uh, very big difference. And also we did a check uh, for pressure evaluation in control points uh, with respect uh, uh, to the experimental data uh, done by CDR in order to uh, understand which was the most accurate uh, model. In accord with CDR, uh, based on this result, uh, the next optimization phase of the project, the task two, adopted a steady state approach uh, with an adequate mesh, so a very quite large mesh, uh, as a good compromise between uh, accuracy and computational costs, considering also that uh, uh, the number of design points to be simulated uh, were, uh, was very high. Uh, the primary output was uh, the, uh, the trust evaluated by an integral and also uh, the pressure evaluation in control points uh, uh, in the rear section of the mug drive pumps. In task two, uh, uh, basically uh, the procedure, uh, the, the parameterization of the pump was, was also done for, for the other three sides uh, three sizes uh, of, of pumps. And then a design of experiment uh, was run with, uh, of course, uh, the use of HPC from, from Chinica. After this uh, um, large uh, run of, of design points, uh, uh, a response surface was generated and refined, and then an optimization uh, based on uh, CDR requirements was done. Finally, uh, performance curves of both NPSH and uh, uh, pressure uh, flow uh, was done in order to uh, uh, understand which were the, the best of uh, the best uh, designs. Regarding the design of experiment, uh, um, uh, in this case, a central composite design was used with uh, seven input parameters. Uh, which took uh, uh, around 80 design points per pump size. Um, in uh, the the design points were run um, on uh, on Chinica Galileo cluster, and uh, took approximately uh, a total of 120 hours of calculation uh, per size pump, uh, only regarding the design of experiment. Then uh, um, the, for for the curves and uh, and and also for the pre-processing and post-processing, uh, there was an another increment of time. Uh, regarding the response surface, um, a response surface was uh, found uh, for for each pump size, and uh, uh, from the response surface, we could understand uh, which were the most important parameters in uh, relation uh, with uh, every output. And uh, from, from this, we were able um, to conduct a, a, an optimization uh, to find the compromise uh, between the targets and, uh, and the higher efficiency. Uh, that uh, was done because um, uh, in, for example, in order to uh, increase the efficiency, um, uh, it was not always possible to both increase the efficiency and uh, reduce the axial thrust. Uh, so we, we performed a constrained multi-objective optimization uh, in order to uh, improve as, as, uh, as, the, as best as we could uh, every single output. Um, the results showed uh, a very good uh, improvement, uh, especially regarding the axial thrust and the NPSHR, uh, but also uh, the efficiency was slightly improved. All the best optimization candidates for the four pumps were evaluated and uh, uh, compared uh, in terms of uh, the NPSH curve. Uh, so uh, many several multi-phase analysis with cavitation activated uh, were performed. And also uh, they were um, compared with the uh, operating curves. Uh, so in terms of uh, 
the head and uh, the efficiency. As I said, uh, for all the four pump sizes uh, taken into exam, uh, the, both the NPSH and head were improved significantly if uh, compared with the original configuration. Uh, axial thrust was uh, highly improved too, uh, but improving efficiency and uh, at the same time reduced the axial thrust uh, by a level of 15%, uh, which was the objective of the CDR. Has not, has not always been possible, especially on the second uh, pump sites, because of uh, a constrained optimization. In total, uh, 100, uh, 130,000 uh, core hours were, were used on uh, Cineca's uh, Galileo 100 to investigate more than uh, 80 design points. Uh, uh, in total were uh, around uh, 90, 95 design points for each pump sites. The target technical objectives have been uh, successfully fulfilled. In the videos, for example, you can see the, uh, the different cavitation at the same conditions between uh, the cavitation areas, between the optimized and the DP0, so the baseline uh, geometry. The experiments also provided CDR with a new working technology uh, methodology and uh, also a knowledge that for sure will be useful to improve further pump design in the future. Regarding the expected impact, um, as already said uh, Luigi before, um, in terms of uh, business impact for CDR Pompe, um, CDR will be uh, for sure more competitive on the European market. Uh, thanks to improved, pro improved products and uh, a new development process. Uh, CDR will also be uh, able to access the US market because uh, um, the new uh, products are compliant with uh, the local ESME standards. And also the reduced maintenance need uh, uh, for, for the new pumps is a game changer for a small medium enterprise such as CDR. Uh, with no maintenance uh, support force uh, in uh, in a foreign market, which is the US. Uh, and it is a very uh, competitive asset in such uh, uh, a new market. So a growth in the company, annual turnover is expected for 1.5 million after five years, taking in, into account also the Southeast uh, market, Southeast Asia, Asian market. The HPC-based design process, uh, uh, is able to cut down the time mar to market of uh, new products uh, by 50%. And also, uh, thanks to the project, CDR duplicated the number of simulation and product design experts in the research and development team. Regarding the environmental impact, uh, uh, more efficient pumps um, lead to uh, a reduced energy consumption, uh, which then lead uh, to a reduced CO2 emission. And also a better design of, for magnetic dry pumps prevent uh, uh, hazardous fluid uh, dispersions and reducing also noise and vibration and uh, increasing the versatility, reliability and durability of the pump. So uh, less planned and unplanned downtime and maintenance is required uh, in the future. Regarding EngineSoft, um, the business impact built a, a, a relevant, uh, this project built a, rele a relevant know-how uh, regarding uh, services, but also software sales, HPC, and uh, training courses related to the pump market and to the mug drive uh, pump market, and also to complementary market sectors. Engineoft is aiming, uh, in this purpose, uh, to an additional uh, turnover of approximately 1.5 million in, in the next three years. The company has also already uh, created a new professional profile in the technical team related uh, to these activities. So to scientific pumps and magnetic dry pumps. Regarding uh, Chineca, uh, uh, the experiment uh, was, a, it's another success story for, for them. Uh, which might also attract new customers in uh, in the sectors. Uh, regarding this project, this particular project, uh, Chineca has a target 
of two potential new customers per year uh, that might lead to 20,000 euros additional revenues in the future. So uh, with this, I finish uh, the presentation. So I thank you for, for, for your attendance. So our project was Cardio HPC and it aims to improve the DL-based uh, arrhythmia classification algorithms and to simulate real-time heart monitoring of thousands of patients. I'm Marian Gushev and uh, I work at the San Cyril uh, and the Methodius University of Skopje and also at Innovation Doyle SME which is uh, part of this uh, which is realizing this project along with the University of Klagenfurt which is uh, ex uh, HPC expert uh, used in this project. So the outline of this uh, presentation follows the objectives, challenges and uh, solution and the approach. So the objectives uh, with this project were how to construct a real-time remote heart monitoring center. But we have very strict key performance indicators. And this is the response should be less than three seconds. And the system should be able to process 10,000 of patients. These were the constraints we have in the very first beginning. So in order to do this, we need to have a HPC environment because otherwise it is impossible to do it. So within this project, we would like, uh, we like to have a large scale demonstration of how to do it in real time and to see if it is possible to get such small response of processing the ECG signal. This processing requires millions of parallel threads, which is possible only with HPC. The second part of the project practically was used to improve the existing deep and machine learning solution. So uh, we would li we liked to make experiments with extensive data set of ECG benchmarks and uh, to improve our classification with the project. So what were the challenges? Practically Innovation Dual is providing an online software solution for remote continuous real-time monitoring. It is called VIEW ECG and it was awarded with C mark as a medical device, which means that we complied to 10, approximately more than 10 uh, standards, international standards, which are needed for medical devices in order to show that the, this software will have the performance and will be safe for all the patients and doctors. So this is what we have uh, in uh, 2020. And uh, we started uh, by uh, to improve this solution. And what we faced was the real problem. The problem was that uh, we practically developed our AI based algorithms on based on machine and deep learning algorithms mainly using one or two ECG benchmark databases and we liked to improve this by using uh, approximately 20 other different ECG databases and when we calculated how much time we will need uh, our first estimation was that we will need probably at more than 20 years to uh, train all the algorithms with the uh, hypermeter uh, settings uh, and get the results. And this was impossible unless we are using uh, GPUs on the HPC environment. And the other, the, the, the biggest problem was, can we make a platform which is capable for big data processing well, what is big data? Big data means that uh, data is coming with large volumes and large velocities. So our goal was to have at least 10,000 of incoming streams, 
in real time and to see if we can do it, if we can manage with our software to process everything with the constraints I mentioned in the beginning, less than three seconds. So choosing the optimal HPC platform was the main challenge practically of, of this uh, solution. So what is the solution? First part concerning the developing of AA-based algorithms with extensive and uh, uh, large ECG benchmark database. And uh, we used thousands of cores on our HPC provider. The second part it was to realize in the experiment and determine uh, the HPC platform. To do this, we have to develop a generator of 10,000 of virtual patient ECG streams. So these streams practically were, used, were sending data from all of these ECG benchmark databases. And these streams were virtually generated like they, they are real patients. And we tested three different HPC environments. The first was to use the HPDA approach, which means that we will use HPC CPU cores for both real-time processing and also the batch processing. So let me explain what is batch processing. Mainly today, uh, persons who need long-term heart monitoring, they are using some kind of holter systems. These holter systems are wired systems and uh, you wear it for 24 hours and then when you return the medical device back to the hospital then the measurement is uploaded to their system and it starts with the batch processing so in our case we use variable ecg monitors which measure seven days so it's not one day it's seven days typically these are uh, very big data like one giga or up to 10 gigabytes of uh, data and when you upload this data to the cloud or to the machine we are going to process it may take a long time like two or three hours processing but our constraint was let's do it if we can do it in less than two or three seconds so having this in mind considering the technology we need to find some kind of solution for batch processing, which was uh, typically uh, using the HPC environment. But however, when we have uh, the real-time processing, so we have 10,000 of incoming streams, which stream approximately 500 bytes per second. This means that we have a lot of data coming in the server a lot of data which needs to be processed with the time constraint less than three seconds and in this case having a standard hpc environment where you can submit a job and then the uh, hpc provider will uh, start the job whenever it has uh, free uh, resources is not convenient for us because we like a very fast response for this case we had to find the solution which was uh, to have dedicated hpc environment with 28 uh, cores per node and we tried a series of experiments with this environment to see if we can get this real-time uh, response the second environment was to use orchestration workflow developed by one of our partners in the project it was the university of innsbruck and klagenfurt it is the xafcl orchestration workflow engine which practically uh, this batch processing uh, uh, distributes to thousands of different uh, streams so it can be parallelized and we can get a very fast response and the last the third one is the 
container-based serverless architecture used for real-time processing, which means that we can use available providers or cloud providers of serverless architecture, which can uh, activate thousands of uh, uh, containers in a, a second, so we can use uh, these as a very efficient scalable solutions. So this will be, uh, as I will say, uh, as I will point out in the uh, in the conclusions, this will be uh, one of the possible solutions. Let me just explain what is the existing solution. Practically, the smartphone sends uh, the sensor sends uh, uh, data to the smartphone, and then the smartphone sends to our data processing unit, which has file stream application, and then it uh, process it sends processing to DPU ap application, which use uses a small SQL database and mostly uses the file database, but the the main uh, access. Uh, is provided by the main application which provides tokens so they can be used for this data processing unit. But the main processing system which requires the most of the time and it is uh, most uh, uh, effective by the response is the BDC system so it is the bit detection and classification system and this is the part where we would we uh, need it uh, the, this HPC environment to set up in the real time and batch processing of offline patients. This is the main workflow, how it looks like. These are the software modules. It is a really complex software. I'm not going to details in, the, in this. Uh, these are how they, uh, the data flow is uh, managed through files in the system and uh, different uh, modules that detect most of the characteristics in the ECG and uh, classify the arrhythmia. Finally, we have reports and uh, alerting system. So the HPDA solution is uh, presented uh, on this uh, uh, slide, which means that uh, now we have uh, a dedicated HPC it's a compute node with 28 cores and 15, uh, 512 gig of, uh, RAM. And uh, we needed one uh, generator. So as I mentioned in the beginning, we created a specific uh, virtual patient generator. So this is the testing application which streams all this data to this HPC system. And this uh, uh, HPC environment is dedicated. It's not uh, rented by the HPC provider when it is available. It was uh, uh, the agreement with our HPC provider to test uh, with uh, several computing nodes and with the workloads, uh, which uh, are more than tens of thousands of uh, incoming streams. Uh, rather, it was uh, very difficult to set up this environment because mostly the uh, providers of HPC environment do not like to uh, change their internal setting and they, they are used to classical job processing. So you submit a job and wait when they have time and then run the, the processes. So uh, we had a really different type of task, uh, which is called uh, high performance data analytics in real time. So then this was the login compute node. Uh, then we have uh, J meter to measure the responses. This is the BDC module, so bit detection and classification module, which was uh, made in a container. Then we also had the pre-processing and post-processing modules and uh, this is the way how it was uh, realized. Uh, this is the data flow of the HPDA solution. So pre-processing BDC and post-processing and the finalization part also uh, was used to, to generate data uh, statistics uh, out of the uh, everything that comes in the system. Uh, the input was measured with uh, adequate uh, uh, software to measure the response time. Uh, these were the experiments, uh, details on experiments. So we uh, sent uh, 
files each five seconds or 10 seconds uh, the file size was uh, is mentioned here uh, for example uh, one hour is approximately three megabytes of uh, file size and these were the responses as you can see uh, in our report uh, there are a lot of details this is just one of the of the results presented here in the beginning there was a little bit of delay which is not acceptable but everything else was within the uh, uh, three seconds uh, response time and we were really satisfied uh, then uh, before going to uh, the next solution uh, just to mention that uh, we got the real results uh, for 10 thousands of patients even on one node with 28 cores so we didn't need uh, although we we run those tests with two or three cores uh, for this amount of workload uh, we concluded that uh, one node with 28 cores was sufficient uh, to uh, perform uh, as we liked uh, next thing that uh, we concluded from this hpda is that uh, it was really acceptable the performance was really acceptable with this uh, hpc environment uh, even for hundreds not for 10 for hundreds of uh, thousands of uh, uh, real-time streams so uh, we were really satisfied with this solution uh, since uh, in our case when we rented the virtual machine and which was acceptable for 10 of uh, users uh, 10 incoming streams if we raised this number to 20 uh, we experienced performance uh, problems now with this hpc environment even with hundreds of thousands of incoming streams this was really uh, sufficient uh, let me just uh, show you that the, um, the second solution the, which used the workflow manager uh, AFCL, AFLC, pardon, uh, which practically uh, the, the the main sorry uh, the main pre-processing BDC and post-processing and finalization parts were parallelized uh, within the hours. This is the batch processing and this was the real-time processing. So we uh, ran here uh also the, the the both the experiments one for the real time and one for the batch processing uh real time is for the online patients and the batch processing was for the offline patients so they submit their uh measurement after the, uh, after the measure and they submit data after the measurement is realized so what were the main outcomes reduced costs and time to design a solution and to simulate uh, to run the simulate uh, simulation experiments uh, if we used our uh, our resources we will probably finish most of these experiments in uh, two or three more years uh, especially for the part of uh, uh, training the ai based uh, algorithms uh, our calculation, initial calculations, was uh, that uh, we will need 16 to 20 years to finish all these experiments. Now we finish in less than six months, uh, which is really, really good for us, even with uh, all those optimizing, uh, uh, optimizing uh, using uh, of, of the hyperparameters. So with this. Uh, experiments uh, we, we run here we develop new features first now we are able to have improved performance then second we uh, we can provide solution for uh, uh, real-time monitoring of 10,000 of patients which was our dream in the beginning. When we set up the, the, the project, uh, we didn't know if it, this is possible or not. So we updated the business strategies. Now we offer this uh, solution uh, without being afraid that we can manage it. Because 
for example, let me give you a simple uh, a simple example. If you have one store and you are selling some product, and if you like to multiply your stores, this is not just simple multiplication. You need to establish your distribution channels. You need to establish infrastructure and everything. So now with this experiment, we practically uh, scaled our solution from tens up to ten thousands, which is really, really beneficial for us. And finally, with this solution, we found the optimal, optimal infrastructure in HPC environment to deliver service. And we reduced the cost. Now we found that uh, due to uh, smaller administration, due to the smaller of uh, maintenance, uh, we can provide uh, the service simultaneously for 10,000 of patients with reduced costs. Practically, what, are, what is the business uh, impact? Now we have a ready-to-market service with two main objectives realized. We have increased performance. Performance is increased because we reduce the error rate. In the beginning, our uh, the efficiency of uh, the accuracy of our algorithms was approximately above 80%. Now, with the latest uh, experiments we have provided, it is approximately more than 90%. So the error rate, which was 20, now is reduced to 10% or less. So we reduced, in, it depends on the arrhythmia, what we are uh, classifying, because for some arrhythmia, we are reaching up to 98%, for some arrhythmia, uh, 91 or 92. So, but uh, on average, the error rate is reduced by 50%. Uh, practically, adding this new product to our portfolio of services, we will double the revenue. And uh, what I mentioned previously, we have 20% increase of efficiency and profit because the costs now are, are reduced. Uh, what is the expected societal uh, impact? We will probably create uh, new jobs because doctors will be engaged in these monitoring centers. Salespersons, distributor, medical assistant, technical support, and everything which is supporting the provision of these services will be needed and uh, we will create new jobs. But the main thing is we will improve the overall healthcare. And by meaning, what does it mean uh, to improve the healthcare? It means that now we can detect arrhythmia in advance. So, for example, there are scientific studies that uh, stroke or heart attack can be detected two hours before the onset. And now we are capable with more than 90% of accuracy to detect dangerous arrhythmia. And this means that we can prevent serious damage of the heart. And this means that we can prolong the lifetime of patients. Why? Because they will use preventive medicine. And this medicine is not supposed to uh, have patients visiting the doctor every day or every week. This means that they can do it remotely at their offices, at their living environment, without changing their lifestyle. And uh, this product and these experiments doesn't have direct impact on the environment. Of course, uh, the solution is spending electricity. For the electricity, we need uh, to produce energy, electrical energy, and this pollutes the environment. We are aware about this. But imagine that this solution will reduce the transportation needs because patients do not need to visit a doctor. The patients do not need to schedule an appointment. Everything will be done seamlessly by the technology we are using. So thank you very much for listening to this. Uh, this was a rather short presentation with not too many technical details. 
Okay, so uh, my name is Athanasius Papadopoulos, and uh, I will talk to you about the integrated design and control CO2 capture and utilization process in parallel infrastructures. Uh, myself, I'm from the Center for Research and Technology, Hellas. Uh, uh, we, are, uh, we have expertise in the development of uh, mathematical optimization algorithms for process design. Uh, and uh, this uh, work has been done in collaboration with Y Squared and Yot Advanced Computing. Uh, y Squared is an end user and application expert, so Y Squared uh, works in the chemical engineering sector in the design of uh, chemical processes for uh, in collaboration for for industrial partners. Uh, and uh, Yot Advanced Computing uh, is an HPC center. Uh, they look. They do a lot of uh, work with uh, clients on uh, that, that go and run their their uh, parallel applications there in their center. Uh, so I will talk to you about the objectives of this work, the motivation and the challenges that are involved, the solution in the HPC approach, the main outcomes and the expected impact of the solution. So the objective here uh, was to uh, I can see my screen now for some reason. Second, yeah, you said, but I cannot see my presentation. So, okay, uh, okay, now I can see it. Uh, the goal was to develop uh, HPC capable algorithms that will provide the leading edge to Y squared, mainly CERT and Yota in the emerging CO2 capture and uh, utilization market. And we, we want to achieve this by identifying, by, by, by tailoring our algorithms to identify uh, designs of reduced costs uh, to enable reduction of the computational effort for design spaces of uh, increased size and uh, to highlight the business motivation due to the, to the ability to solve problems using HPC. Now, let me say a few words about the domain of this application. So CO2 capture is, is very important. Uh, you've all heard that CO2 is responsible for the increase of the average uh, temperature of the planet and uh, subsequently for the, for the change of the climate. So it's very important that we do something about it. Uh, I'm just giving you some examples here. A single coal-fired power generation plant may emit up to 25 million of tons per year of CO2, post-combustion CO2. So that's an enormous amount of, of CO2. Uh, if you imagine that CO2 is, is a gas, okay, and we're talking about tons here. And uh, the, the cement industry, for example, is producing 5% of the world's CO2. And the cement industry has another problem. Uh, it doesn't only produce CO2 from combustion, but CO2 is already in the raw material that is used to produce, to produce the product, uh, the cement. So even if we were fully green in terms of energy, uh, we will still have to deal with the CO2 that's emitted from uh, this uh, industry. So it's a big problem. So the goal is to be able to install capture units in all these uh, kind of uh, sectors. And then our idea here is to to capture, to, to get the capture CO2, use, use it as a raw material to produce uh, what we call precipitated calcium carbonate. Uh, this is a product uh, that is very mature as a product. Uh, there is a market for it already. Uh, but the problem is that it's produced, it is, it is produced through conventional methods, uh, conventional processes, and uh, in the micro scale. Uh, so our goal here is to be able to produce it in the nano scale. And in order to achieve this in the nano scale, uh, this product has a higher value. It has much better properties. It can improve the applications where it will be used. Uh, so, but in order to achieve this, we also needed a very innovative uh, process in order to reduce the cost. And I will show you uh, what I mean in general. So as I said, uh, the carbon capture and the carbon utilization uh, are emerging, emerging markets. Uh, so if you see, there are very, very, very few installed uh, capture plants at the moment. Uh, and this is because the costs are very high. Um, the carbon capture value is worth uh, 2.4 billion as of now, and is expected to reach 5 billion by 2027. But uh, this is, uh, I would say, a rather conservative uh, estimate because uh, we see a lot of uh, incentives in recent years in order to 
to get more and more of these uh, systems installed. Uh, the nano particle market is strongly dynamic and is expected to reach a global demand of 40 million tons per year by 2024, with a market value in the scale of 9 billion euros. Uh, and as I said, our goal is to produce precipitated calcium carbonate nanoparticles, uh, which have applications in numerous industries like in pharmaceuticals, in the construction industry, in the buildings, in the paper, in the fine chemicals. So it's a very important material. Uh, depending on their purity, these uh, nanoparticles uh, have a value between 1,000 and 2,000 euros per ton. Uh, and uh, uh, the thing is that they're produced uh, by conventional processes, uh, which are expensive. Uh, they can be sold as green chemicals if they're produced from capsule CO2, obviously. And uh, Y squared can, can greatly benefit uh, by, by entering these markets. And we think that uh, parallel computing is, is a great approach in order to, uh, to attain a leading edge. Uh, so when, when you design these kind of systems, it's important to get optimal solutions. So for example, if, if we, you design a conventional CO2 capsule unit, uh, in order to install it, you need about 100 million euros for a large industrial uh, plant, and even more than that, possibly. So if you can get an optimal design, this may reduce the cost a lot uh, by 10 to 15 uh, percent. So we're talking about a lot of savings that can be achieved here. Uh, and of course, uh, when we talk about CO2 capture utilization, it's important when we design such systems in order, it's important to be able to consider different types of materials and different types of operating scenarios. Uh, solvents are very important for this process because this is how the CO2 is captured. You have a liquid that uh, circulates inside the process, and as soon as the gas comes into contact with this liquid that is called the solvent, then you capture the CO2. So when we put a solvent in a process that is designed for a different solvent, it means that it will underperform. It, it's the same, this example is the same as in cars. Cars running on petrol need a proper diesel engine. If you put another type of fuel in that car that runs on a diesel engine, then uh, this car will probably break down. It will perform very poorly. It's the same idea. And of course, when we design such systems, we, mean, we need to take uh, into account uh, as much as possible the operating conditions uh, in order to emulate and simulate the operating, uh, the, the reality. And uh, usually what happens because the problem is, is quite uh, difficult uh, to model and simulate. Uh, people made all kinds of uh, simplifying assumptions assumptions, and this result in this result into unrealistic uh, processes. Uh, so you see here just a typical uh, a typical picture of a typical uh, CO2 capture uh, system, uh, conventional flows it I would say. It, it, it comprises two columns here, as you see, and you see how the solvent comes uh, from the top, the flue gas, which contains the CO2 uh, in, in a quite diluted 10, 12 percent uh, CO2. Uh, it comes into contact with the first column, and then uh, a product, a liquid product is produced that contains the CO2. It's got to be preheated, and then you turn up the heating in this second column here, and then uh, the CO2 is released and the rest of the solvent is uh, recycled back to the first column. So you pay a lot here for the, for the heating because all this takes place at uh, 120 degrees Celsius. And then of course you have all the capital costs. Uh, so design a system is very challenging for two reasons mainly. Okay, for three reasons, not for two reasons. First, we need to take into account billions of discrete and continuous design options. So the size of these columns, are design options, design variables, uh, the flows, the temperature conditions, the sizes of the equipment, uh, everything is a design variable that affects directly the economics of the process. So we can have billions of such uh, combinations. Uh, another problem is, uh, is uh, that uh, you need detailed models. 
So each simulation of that such a system takes uh, several seconds. So when you need to make uh, 10,000 simulations in order to get an optimum design, then uh, you, it's, it's, it's a problem, computational problem. And of course, uh, what I talked about here is uh, only if you consider the steady state process design. But in reality, such systems uh, operate under variability. So you have uh, variability in the flue gases, you have uh, variability due to malfunctions. Uh, so you need to be able to take all these things into account when you design something because they have a direct impact on the economics. And uh, so the computational effort increases a lot. And uh, what happens in, in, in practice is that uh, people use uh, all the self software tools that are sold commercially, but they don't have such capabilities. Uh, they hardly perform optimization, and of course, they don't at all uh, per perform design and variability. That's the question. So the result is the design of expensive systems, which are not appealing for investors. And uh, pretty much this is a reason why uh, CO2 capture and utilization has has uh, has not been uh, used extensively in in uh, in the industry so far. Uh, so, so what happens uh, with all the sales tools uh, is that they use a sequential approach in order to design such systems. So what one would do is uh, they would first uh, use an optimization algorithm at the best case to design the CO2 capture uh, process here. Uh, so you basically iterate for different uh, parameters uh, in order to find to to optimize to optimize an objective function, and you consider steady state, and then once you get the optimum solution here, you may want to put it uh, through a controllability assessment. So in order to take into account the variability, do some optimization here based on another objective function, and then you may want to take the optimum solution from here and put it through the C2 utilization model. Uh, to uh, design the steady state uh, utilization process. And then you may also want to add another step where you may want to also take into account the variability into the CO2 utilization process. So the problem here is that uh, normally uh, it's very it's very rare to see the, the, the fourth step here. And uh, the problem is that uh, when you do follow the sequential approach, you only consider the effects of variability on one final solution, on the steady state solution. But there are many designs that are produced here during the optimization that may have different sensitivity in, uh, in real operation, real operating conditions. So you may get a steady state design that uh, has a very good economics under steady state, but uh, with a small uh, with a small uh, disturbance, uh, you may get very high sensitivity and the economics might deteriorate very much. Uh, whereas there might be solutions here uh, that are produced, uh, which may not be as good at steady state conditions, but uh, they might, might be more, much more resilient to variability. So we want to do all these steps simultaneously in order to account for all these things. Uh, so, and obviously we want parallel computing to help us in that uh, direction because uh, because the problem, as I said, as I explained, is, is very challenging. So this is the algorithm that we have developed and we're using here. So we have an external layer here uh, that is implemented through simulate annealing and it takes it takes care of the discrete design variables of the problem, uh, which which pertain to the sizes of the equipment, for example, uh, and uh, handles the overall objective function, the overall objective function of the problem. And we have an internal two internal stages here. Uh, so we have the CO2 capture process optimization internally. So for each set of discrete variables. You optimize the set of continuous variables of the of the CO2 capture optimization problem at steady state here. Uh, so, for example, the operating conditions and the flows. And then uh, you put this uh, design into the the simulation of the CO2 utilization process. 
at steady state again. Uh, you produce uh, this, these optimizations are, are, are done through through objective functions at its level, and of course in parallel you you uh, com once this optimization steady state is uh, is finished, you communicate the optimum design here to the controllability assessment part where where you actually optimize for different operating scenarios, and this is only for the CO2 capture process, and then you communicate this design here to the CO2 utilization process. And you do this, you, you basically simulate the effects of, of disturbances uh, into, the CO, into the CO2 utilization process as, there are, as these are propagated through the, the state variables here. By, by state variables, we mean the CO2 uh, flow rate uh, and, uh, and the outlet uh, composition of this uh, stream. So overall, you come up with uh, one objective function overall that accounts for the for the steady state uh, economics and the economics under variability, and you optimize all the time. How we do this? So simulate and easily is a heuristic algorithm for the discrete variable optimization. We use up IPOP, which is a nonlinear programming a nonlinear programming optimization algorithm that uh, considers uh, con continuous variables. Uh, we use Pitcon, it's a continuation method that employs a predictive corrector numerical technique to identify the optimal solution for the continuous variables, Consider is, uh, considering uh, disturbances in, in, in an objective function that uh, takes into account the control uh, problem structure. And the simulations here, the CU process, they uh, are performed uh, using a Newton-based algorithm for the algebraic part and, uh, and uh, ordinary differential uh, equations for the differential part of the of the mathematics that are involved here and of course uh, by doing this we will parallelize all of this at the late of the at the stage of the at the level of the simulated annealing so what we parallelize basically is the discrete variables so we send multiple uh, vectors of discrete variables simultaneously uh, in a number of parallel uh, processors and in each parallel processor, you have the sequential solution of the steady state uh, design problem of the controllability design problem for the CO2 uh, capture uh, uh, formulation and then again for the steady state uh, formulation. Uh, so what are the algorithmic challenges? Well, simulate annealing, it produces many designs, but uh, it requires a large number of iterations because uh, there are many designs that are produced that are repetitive. So it tends to revisit designs that have been previously visited. So there's no point really in, in, in re-simulating these designs because they just take time with, with no, for no reason. So I'll show you afterwards how we deal with this problem. Uh, for IPOPT, uh, the problem is that uh, quite often uh, the designs don't converge mathematically. So these algorithms basically use uh, a mathematical uh, threshold which, uh, and you get out a flag which says if, if uh, the design uh, is uh, converged or not. So when uh, the problem is that you have to always get, uh, you have to always have good starting points in order to make sure that this converges, and this is not often possible because the changes in the size of the equipment or the conditions uh, uh, they, they 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 incur large changes. So it's not often always use, uh, easy to find this uh, such a good starting point. So the problem is that uh, the designs that don't converge they take an awfully long time and in the end if eventually they don't, don't converge the design is useless so you have wasted all this time uh, the same holds uh, with Pitcon. the same happens with Pitcon. so uh, you don't want to waste all this time how we how do we solve this we have solved this using approximate computing techniques uh, two types of techniques the one technique is, is called memoization and uh, it addresses the problem of simulate annealing to which revisits uh, previous designs. So when we, we, we keep a record of all, all the previously visited designs and uh, in every iteration, we go into this record and we search. And if the designs have, has been revisited, then we skip all this time consuming part. 
because we already have the objective function value. If, if not, then we go through to the simulation. And the second uh, approximate computing technique is uh, the task dropping one, where basically we have a time threshold. Uh, we have made some uh, tests uh, offline and uh, we have uh, identified a time threshold and uh, where uh, usually this is how long uh, converts, converts simulations last. So we say that uh, after, if a simulation lasts longer than, the ta than this uh, time threshold, uh, we just drop it. Uh, so we save a lot of time here, of course, trading it off for the approximation that some uh, solution may eventually end up in, in, uh, in convergence, but these are so few that uh, it doesn't really make a difference. Uh, now, the carbon capture model. So, as I said before, it's it's uh, you need to to consider uh, many many variables, design variables, and these design variables don't only uh, don't only pertain to the sizes of the columns here, but also to the configuration of the whole flow sheet. So, uh, we have extracted five such configurations, which are basically de uh, design variables in the problem together with the operating conditions and the sizes of the equipment. So this is the first configuration. In the it is the conventional configuration. Everybody's using this. The second one has a change in the way that the, the disorder here, the second column operates. So if we, we know from literature that if you change, if you split the streams of the material flows in this, in this disorder, you can get an increase in the driving forces uh, which can save you uh, save you operating expenses. So this is one configuration. Another configuration has the same uh, scheme in the disorber, but it it adds intercooling in the absorber. Uh, and we know that uh, if you start, if you, this is a, an exothermic reaction that happens here. So if you cool it, you increase the kinetics, and you have the opportunity to reduce the size. Another configuration uh, here is the multi-feed absorber. So we also know that if you put different, uh, if you feed the input, the solvent, at different uh, at different heights of the absorption column, again you have the opportunity to reduce the size of the equipment. And then this is the last uh, configuration, which is uh, the same as this one, but uh, with with a conventional absorber. So we want to see the trade-offs be between all these configurations. Uh, and of course, the solvents are also design variable. So uh, we use different uh, four different solvents uh, in order to see how the interplay between all this uh, can affect the economics. Uh, the carbon capture model has uh, some nasty mathematics in it, uh, so it's, it's quite sophisticated. So uh, you have to account for reactions, mass, and heat exchange that take place in the column uh, section. So in its section in here, that you see, uh, uh, we use orthogonal collocation of finite elements to simulate this. It's a technique that is known to reduce the amount of equations that are used, that are needed in order to perform the simulations. And uh, uh, the calculations take place separately in each phase. So you have a liquid phase and a gas phase. Uh, so it's, it's quite complicated how you put the mathematics in here in order for it to work. Uh, I won't go into more details on that. Uh, so that's for the carbon capture model. Now the, the carbon utilization model, as I said to you before, uh, it uses a very, very advanced and highly intensified reactor in order to be able to produce the nanoparticles, the nano-sized particles. Uh, normally, conventionally, what uh, what people do is is that they use a conventional reactor called a CCR reactor. They produce the particles at at, uh, at micro scale, and then they use a mechanical crushing in order to further reduce the size of the particles at the nano scale. Uh, of course, that's very costly. You you need more equipment, and you need uh, you need a lot of energy. Uh, what we propose here is a new and intensified reactor called rotating pack bed, uh, which can do all this thing, can do this at one stage, so directly produce the nano-sized particles. What is the big advantage? You see here, 
the size of co a conventional column, what is called a packed bed column, and the size of a rotating packed bed. Uh, you reduce the equipment size very much, and you and this is achieved by intensifying the mass and energy transfer because this thing actually rotates. So everything happens in this rotating cylinder here, and uh, and uh, you get uh, this uh, mass transfer intensification that uh, reduces the size very much, ten times lower volume with unconventional reactors. So so it's it's a very useful uh, approach. So there, there, are, there are very few models for nanoparticles production and, uh, in the literature, so there's very little information through, through uh, an RPB. And uh, so we developed a steady state rate-based model for uh, PCC production. Uh, and we, have, we were fortunate enough to also have, a, a, to also have an, a pilot scale equipment in our lab. Uh, this was done independently of the project. Uh, so we, we had uh, we had uh, experimental results, and we were also able to validate our model. And you see here that uh, it, it fits the experimental results very well. Uh, so the simulation of this model, as I said, is, is it's quite uh, it's, it's quite difficult because you go through many steps. Uh, you have to make this is the RPB here. What we basically design is the is the outer diameter of the column, and the rest is is uh, is calculated uh, based on this outer diameter. So the size of this uh, rotating disk, uh, the inner diameter of the rotating disk, and so on. And so you have to make hypotheses uh, for this uh, diameter. Uh, then you have to go through, uh, solve the algebraic equations, solve the differential equations, and you have to iterate for different diameters. And then, uh, and then all this takes several seconds. So it's 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 challenging where you have to 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 make all these all these uh, iterations through simulated annealing. And of course, uh, we have added a downstream processing uh, equipment, which is necessary because you get a slurry out of this. Uh, the slurry contains the nanoparticles. Uh, a slurry is basically an aqueous solution. It's water with the nanoparticles in it. So you then have to filter the to filter the water, most of the water, and then you have to dry it to dry the solids in order to to take the powder out of it. Uh, so this part includes additional costs, and we have to also factor that in. Uh, so so this is a multi multi level optimization problem, as you see here. Uh, you have to have different objective functions at the different stages. So you have to minimize uh, the costs at the, at the IP op block at the steady state, uh, both for the CO2 capture and the CO2. Well, for the CO2 capture, you minimize costs. For the CO2 utilizing, you maximize profit. And then you have to do the same for the uh, design under variability. Uh, and uh, overall, you need another objective function in order to, to aggregate all this information. So it's quite complex. In order to come up, it was challenging during the project. In order to come up with the correct forms of these equations, uh, in order to best reflect the economics of the process, and especially this this equation here on the on the variability block was quite challenging to to fix it. In order to take it into account all the operating realization uh, scenarios. Uh, so, what are the our case studies? So, here is a typical case study for for the quicklime production. Quicklime is is a is a product. Uh, that is very common. Uh, so it's it's a calcium hydroxide basically, as you see here. So you pl produce, you have uh, calcium carbonate as a raw material. You produce calcium oxide and then calcium hydroxide through so hydration. And this is the raw material, the first raw material for the nanoparticles production. And of course, you capture the flue gas here that is produced from the burning of the calcium carbonate. Uh, you, you, you capture the flue gas, you capture the CO2, and this is the second raw material that goes into here. And this is the first case study. The second case study is for the cement industry, and the flow, the flow sheet is uh, pretty similar. Uh, of course, the, the specifications of the flue gas and of the, of the raw material are different uh, for the two industries. Uh, so for the quick climb case, we have 12% CO2 and about 12.5% uh, water. Uh, and for the for the cement case, we have about 15% CO2 and 20% water. 
So you see here a big difference in water content and water is very important for the water balance in here uh, because uh, if you put a lot of moisture in here, it is problematic. Uh, so so this and also the moisture affects the CO2 capture uh, design. So it's important. Uh, we had two variability scenarios for the quick climb case. We had a negative variability scenario. So you see we had variability. We had a disturbance on the on the flue gas on the flue gas flow rate here. And we had a very uh, quite complex uh, variability scenario here in order to emulate the, the operation of such a plant. So we assume that this plant would operate during the year for 30% of the time at steady state, uh, for 20% of the time at minus uh, 0.6 variability in flue gas, and so on. The, the, the variability decreased uh, for different percentages of time. For the cement case, we did an opposite scenario. So we went to the to positive variability in order to see the effects of, of positive variability. So when we say negative variability, we mean that we assume that uh, the flue gas flow rate would be would reduce, and this uh, reflects an operating scenario where uh, this uh, process here operates at part load. So this happens quite often. You know, uh, demands and market conditions uh, require require from this side to operate at lower capacity. So we ha you have lower flue gas, and of course, uh, sometimes you also need positive variability. So this means that uh, you may be requested to cover higher demands to increase the operation of the of your plan more than the nominal conditions. And of course, you have the you have the ability to make more profit like that, but it's not good because the wear and tear of the equipment uh, increases because you need to, to push your equipment in order to produce more. So neither of the scenarios is good. Uh, you need to, to be as close as possible to the nominal operation. So here are some uh, computational results. So here we see a typical uh, convergence uh, diagram for simulated annealing. Uh, we executed everything in Yota's HPC infrastructure in up to 100 cores. Uh, and you see here the scalability. Uh, it's quite a linear uh, relation, so the scalability was very good. Uh, at, in 100 cores, the code runs 50 times faster than in two cores. Uh, the computational wall time range between 3.1 hours and 24 hours for the runs, and this is typical for an algorithm like such as simulate annealing. Uh, depending where you start from, you may have longer or shorter uh, execution. Uh, we saved a lot of time through the approximate computing techniques. Uh, <laughs> So by, by, by avoiding designs ha that have been re repeated allowed us to save a lot, to save a lot of time. And uh, so that was very good. And these are the results for the quick climb case. So the, 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 uh, you see here that the cost of uh, per ton, so, so it, here is a different solvent and a different uh, process uh, flow sheet. And we compared everything to the conventional solvent and process flow sheet for the sequential scenario. So what <coughs> What a commercial a commercial stakeholder would do in order to address this problem, and we the cost per ton of uh, CO2 captured uh, and uh, was uh, reduced by 5.4 percent, and uh, uh, the overall reduction here was the cost of uh, per ton of product was not no it's, this is 15.4 percent. And the cost uh, of product was uh, reduced by 6.7 percent. And uh, then we saw that uh, when we added this downstream process, so the the drying and the filtering process, uh, the cost increased a lot because you need to uh, to to put a lot of energy in there. Uh, so we went for a from a product cost of 111 euros per ton. The product cost of 479 euros per ton, uh, but still the profit margin is enormous here because uh, normally this uh, product would be sold in in the market for about 1,000 to 2,000 euros per ton. Uh, so so that's that's great. Uh, we found that the return on investment is about 4.4 years, so this is very appealing already. And we found that if we reduce, if we increase the efficiency of, of the filter by 10%. We can go to return on investment to 2.5 years, so that's that's great. Uh, the results for the cement case were very similar. 
for the for the cost per ton of CO2, the improvement was 19.7%, and uh, for the cost per ton of product was 8.3% uh, compared to the sequentially designed case. Uh, the solvent was the same as in the quick climb case. The process was slightly different, only very slightly different. Uh, but uh, the fact that at least the solvent was uh, similar is very good because this means that uh, you can use the same solvent for different flue gas patterns and different variability scenarios. And this makes this solvent very marketable, easily marketable. Uh, can we conclude, please? Uh, yes, yes. Learning. So the business benefits uh, for uh, Y squared. Uh, y squared is only provided design studies for CO2 capture and CO2 utilization uh, in, in industry. Uh, customers are industrial plants that emit CO2 and have a direct need to install such systems. Industrial plants that need uh, to use the CO2 to transform to commercial products such as uh, PCC. And of course, companies that manufacture uh, carbon capture and carbon utilization equipment. Seth is already co collaborated with Y Squared uh, to add value to their design by providing design and construction of pilot scale units so that experimental results may be derived prior to scaling up. Yota will offer its HPC infrastructure and expertise to the new design studies in collaboration with YSD and CERT, as it has experience and the software already set up. And uh, the CO2 capturing utilization market is just emerging. There will be significant business opportunities here. And of course, with respect to, to societal impacts, uh, I won't go through these conclusions. I just want to say that for societal impacts, what we're doing here is that we're capturing CO2 for, from the atmosphere. We're putting it into something that has an actual value. It's very useful for the, uh, the pharma industry. It's very useful for the construction industry and many other industries. And it will not be released again into the atmosphere because it is a solid. So this is very good uh, for societal purposes as well. So thank you very much for your attention. OK, hello. My name is Leopoldo Alvarez González, the and the researcher in Anfaco de Copesca, and I was the deputy coordinator of the experiment 1125, HPC for Canet Food Dynamics. The title of my presentation is Optimization of the Design and Operation of Thermal Equipment for Food Processing Industry through Boosting CCD Simulation with HPC Results. And during this presentation, I will detail the objectives, thresholds, and benefits uh, obtained uh, through this experiment. Uh, this experiment looked for the optimization of the design and operation of thermal equipment and for food processing using CFD uh, simulation with HPC resource. Yes, first of all, uh, I'm going to detail the five partners that participated in this experiment. Uh, four from Galicia in Spain and one from Portugal. Uh, third of all, uh, Tacore is an autoclave uh, manufacturer, SME, and is the final user. Uh, ESEA is a technical consultancy specialized in CFD simulation, uh, was the leader of the consortium and had the role of CFD expert. Uh, plus, Anfaco de Copesca uh, is a technological research center and no profit business association, uh, has given the support and technology expert uh, as an end user. Uh, from Portugal, uh, CEU is the Faculty of Engineering of the uh, University of Porto, provide uh, his knowledge about energy efficiency to propose uh, and simulate improvements to optimize the autoclave energy performance. At last, uh, CESGA, member of the Spanish NCC, is the provider of the computer resource as an EPC expert uh, role. Well, uh, about the objective of the uh, project, uh, the main problems that uh, currently exist in the autoclave manufacturing industry and in thermal equipment in general uh, are uh, these uh, five points. First, the design and manufacture of uh, autoclave demand high qualified personnel in this specific field. Uh, second is the long time requirement for design, uh, approximately four months to manufacture and, uh, and validate a new industrial autoclave. Uh, the optimal uh, heat distribution, distribution should be homogeneous uh, inside the equipment for a correct sterilization and avoid uh, cold stops. Uh, the CFD simulation tools uh, require high computational resources uh, and uh, this makes necessary uh, the simplification, simplification of the models. And there is a low uh, capability for quick modification due to the final uh, request uh, because long the time design of uh, each equipment. 
Uh, so taking into account this disadvantage, uh, the objective of this experiment was to help uh, Takore, the autoclave manufacturer SME, uh, to solve these problems with the help of HPC with these partial objectives. Uh, create a more realistic CFD model of an autoclave, which could be modified in the future in order of uh, computer requirements. Uh, accelerate the running time of this model by the use of HPC to overcome computational uh, processing limits barrier and provide more realistic and accurate simulation in less time. Uh, study of the in, uh, energy in, uh, efficiency uh, improvement of the autoclaves and analyze uh, the feasibility of adding heat recovery systems. And uh, last, uh, design a, a web uh, GUI interface in order that the end user of the autoclave could simulate and validate the recipes of sterilization. The challenge uh, for this experiment uh, can be summarized in this uh, following five points. Uh, first, the great economic value of the canning industry in Europe, specifically in Spain, first canned fish producer in Europe, and in Portugal, among the first five uh, producers. Uh, there is a high demand of energy of thermal treatments applied in autoclaves for product sterilization. Improve, uh, this process will permit uh, cost saving in the food production chain. Uh, develop a specialized, uh, specialized uh, tool with open source solution in order to use by non-specialized uh, personnel and with low cost for the end user companies. And make this tool intuitive uh, and configurable uh, for the end user with, uh, by a web uh, GUI interface and connect it with HPC platform to improve running times for simulation. And last, uh, doing the real validation of this simulation results in an autoclave uh, prototype. The final solution uh, is a tool focused on simulation thermal sterilization process in autoclaves and to measure uh, the energy consumption of the process with or without energy recovery system. The tool uh, allows to simulate different sterilization process with the option of uh, configuring the, the times and temperature set points of the different recipes and also change the position of the temporary probes. Uh, this uh, solution will be offered as a SaaS service, including the HPC resource, and offered to customers as subscription, uh, with all service included. Uh, and, and this solution consists mainly in, of two parts, uh, the simulation model in open form and the web GUI interface as a user integration system. Uh, here, in, in the following schematic diagram, we can see the technical architecture of the final implemented solution. Uh, we have uh, two independent uh, web servers. On the one hand, uh, the HPC server hosted as Serga, uh, where is the running the open phone simulation model. On the other hand, we have, the, uh, we have a standard web server, which uh, could be hosted outside HPC suppliers. This server uh, hosts backend application which communicate via SH, uh, SSH uh, with the HPC server and also it hosts the database and the SFTP server. And last, uh, hosting the second web uh, server too, is the, uh, we have the final client as the end user integration application. The simulation model was carried out uh, taking into account uh, the case study of the heat uh, transfer problems between multiple regions. And the mesh uh, was made by the unstructured uh, 3D uh, method with a number of cells of about uh, 1 point uh, million. The solver engine uh, was the THT multi region form uh, using as partition method uh, I and Scotch. The second major part of this, this solution is the GUI web interface, which has the uh, following functionality for the end users. A simulation story for analysis, uh, uh, for analysis and visualization, visualization of the results. Simulation and execution configuration, uh, for example, load configuration, times, set points of recipe, etc. By bailing section uh, to manage the money cost of the tool. Uh, there is a possibility of HPC resource configuration depending on how fast is necessary the simulation, considering that more resources uh, will have a higher cost. Setting pros, uh, location of the simulation model, uh, PDF uh, reports generation of the simulation story, and comparative analysis of the results of different uh, simulations. Uh, 
Uh, the use of HPC uh, permit execution time reduction by 90% compared to the use of a computer with a medium level computational resource uh, of uh, five or, or six uh, cores. <coughs> with this reduction, uh, we successfully uh, achieved the objective of initial goal of providing user quite uh, access to the result of the complex simulation uh, between five or uh, 15 of, uh, the minutes of simulation running. NSPBAT uh, core was established, established uh, with the following factor. One core per task, uh, 48 uh, MPI tasks per mode, and 8 uh, gigas of memory per node. In the following uh, slides, we will detail the four main outcomes. Uh, the first uh, outcome was the CFD model of an autoclave for an experimental data. Uh, an open uh, CFD model of an industrial autoclave for canning food was developed. The model is user configurable, allowing users to modify more than 30 parameters of the sterilization process. Uh, the project was set up for a solution through parallelization to take advantage of HPC resource. And the number of processors is adjustable, uh, depends on needs and urgency of the user. Second outcome was the web GUI interface connecting with APC platform. Uh, a web-based uh, GUI application was developed uh, to assist users for setting CFD simulation parameters. Uh, with this tool, final user can configure both uh, the sterilization process and third time a state of job processing and also its permits change proof location. As well, the user has access to the story simulation carried out in order to analyze and compare them. Uh, it was carried out uh, a successful, uh, successful uh, interconnection and exchange of information between open source web server and APC server uh, and the validation uh, final of the tool. The outcome three was the simulation speed improvement using HPC resource. Uh, this permit to increase uh, of, of number of simulation details and reduction of the simulation uh, computation time uh, about uh, 90 percent uh, uh, from uh, 0.5 to 1.5 hours of a medium performance computer uh, we can make the now a simulation with jpc uh, around uh, 10 minutes also significantly enhance the capacity to study large number of design and variation of the sterilization process thanks to job parallelization offered by the NPC platform. The last outcome was the real test of validation and energy consumption study of an autoclave. Uh, it was carried out a successful uh, validation of simulation results in real test with a real autoclave prototype. An energy consumption analysis of the sterilization uh, process was carried out under different conditions in real test and the simulation tool. Calculation of an edge exchanger uh, was made and included in the simulation tool in order to calculate the economy feasibility uh, depending on the settings and the cost of the fuel user. Numerical model was developed to include in the, in the tool the calculation of thermal energy and CO2 emissions. Uh, the business impact for each of the partners in, the, in this experiment uh, will be detailed in the next uh, presentations. Uh, for Tacuare, the business impact can be summarized in three main points. Uh, first, the impact market advantage as, as autoclave manufacturing SME, having a tool that permits a more efficient and customizable uh, manufacturing. Uh, cost reduction to design the, and develop new autoclaves will facilitate uh, the substitution of inefficient and obsolete uh, equipment. This tool will save about uh, 40,000 per year in water and energy for real trials. For ASEA, it should be not uh, opening of new market uh, with the knowledge of curing in HPC. Two potential uh, long-term loyal customers of automotive include already interested in similar uh, simulation tools for urban vulcanization and compound delimitation. In terms of human, human resource, uh, the, these opportunities will involve the incorporation of a specialized profile for the tool develop and support of a SaaS uh, service. And for AFACO, uh, as a business organization with more uh, than uh, 250 members of marine and food industry, 
this is an opportunity, uh, this is an opportunity uh, to offer and exploit the new tools generated in these companies. Furthermore, the, the industrial application of this new service in the production process will face a business benefit in terms of energy consumption, savings and reducing of the uh, CO2 into the atmosphere. Finally, for the FEU, uh, as an educational organization, they will have a new tool for their students of industrial and mechanical engineering as a showcase uh, for possible uh, energy optimization application in industrial system. Stand, stand, students can uh, uh, use this uh, tool to have uh, knowledge of CO2 emissions, saving with the proposed solutions. And another impact will be the opening of new contacts with companies to present the tool to acquire or making similar new projects together. As uh, environmental impact, we can highlight uh, these uh, three impacts. Uh, first, an experiment simulation and analysis provide detailed information of how much energy an autoclave consumes for the transition process. Detection of put, uh, possible uh, future actions of change uh, to avoid energy losses. So lower uh, CO2 emissions and a, small, a smaller carbon footprint could be achieved. Uh, last, the future of use of uh, on food company of the uh, tools uh, this style will produce uh, energy savings and reduction of the CO2 emissions into the atmosphere. Uh, also, the use of a more efficient autoclaves in food industry will have the same impact. Uh, finally, thanks uh, to the participation of this experiment, uh, the, the benefit for each uh, partner uh, will be uh, for TACORE, the reduction uh, product uh, cost estimation of around 23 of the, uh, an autoclave price. Uh, this is, uh, is uh, under uh, 100,000 euros annually. Uh, the, this means 2.3% uh, of the average uh, annual re renewable. Uh, they are estimates uh, an, an annual revenue uh, for, from 40 to 60,000 of euro for the new service exploitation and for the develop of a similar application with new customer collaboration. For Anfaco, as non-profit uh, business association, the benefit is estimated uh, for its food uh, and sea companies as said, for, from saving costs and energy. It is estimated at 2% of product uh, process reduction. And lastly, uh, for FEU as an educational uh, organization, the main benefit is to have a new instrument uh, for academic activities and the knowledge acquired about CF, uh, HPC and uh, autoclave thermal process. Also, the possible opening of new partners uh, to develop uh, similar studies. Uh, so lastly, on behalf of all partners of the experiment, we would like to thank to BFF uh, for HPC Consortium for giving us the opportunity to participate in this project. And um, thank you for all. Um, uh, this is an improvement project for the composite materials, improvement of the graphene epoxy mixing recipes for composites industry by understanding the interaction mechanism through HPC calculations. This is 1119, uh, exper experiment 1119. Why it is not moving? Clicking? Yes, when click I changed, okay. We have uh, two companies, one of them the leading company, Alti Dynamics is an SME. Uh, it's a, our technology expert. Uh, their focus is on the advanced uh, aerospace material technologies. They are also doing testing uh, systems. Project. They are product designer and composite manufacturer. Uh, Nanography is not an SME. It is a larger scale company. It is a, one of the uh, Europe's largest graphene uh, production plants. They have their own patented innovative graphene production method, and uh, they are uh, producing raw materials, composite materials, which uh, Alti Dynamics turned it into the uh, special products uh, for the special industries such as aerospace. Uh, another partner of the project is us. I am working on uh, in Middle East Technical University. We are uh, HPC experts. We take uh, HPC experts role in this project. Middle East Technical University is in Ankara. 
uh, I, I am in chemistry department. We also have other technology expert, uh, HPC expert from the physics department. And our HPC center supported us. Turuba, uh, it is Tübitak Ulakbin, which is Turkish national science uh, uh, infrastructure. It is our national center for providing high performance computing uh, infrastructures. Middle East Technical University, I mean our uh, HPC experts, and the Turuba is also part of the NCC, EuroCC project. Uh, these are the partners of the project. So uh, we have four partners, two private companies, one university and one HPC center. Composite material is a really challenging uh, process to, res uh, for, to research and develop. Why? Because you have to optimize the type of the additive, you have to optimize type of the matrix material, uh, it requires uh, very uh, high amount of materials used to, to reach the optim to optimize the all parameters, and they have to use iterative production processes, and it is time consuming to come with a new composite material. In our case, we have a plastic material, and we are adding a. Uh, high performance new generation 2D graphene and graphene oxide material. So we have many parameters, type of the polymer, the oxygen percentage, carbon oxygen ratio in the graphene, graphene oxide. What is the mass percentage uh, as an additive and this kind of many materials. And we cannot, uh, the companies cannot provide very fast tangible results to their customers. Uh, that is the reason uh, this we proposed this project. We proposed this project two years ago because HPC can increase the this rate, uh, can increase the rate of research and development for the composite material. We can reduce la labor, uh, we can avoid material waste, increase production efficiency, reduce production costs and improve the understanding of the material at molecular scale. This will decrease the amount of work significantly to reach superior and enhanced material. Our motivation is to reach large scale, reliable, cost effective composite production by optimizing all the parameters of the composites by using high performance computing center. The method we choose is the molecular dynamic simulations, which, uh, which including thousands of atoms, uh, and we are doing very accurate, we are using all atom force fields, so we have to use HPC system. Uh, it will increase our accuracy when we use HPC center. The, the job jobs are completed in less than two days. I will give details in a minute. We, we can deliver more consistent and repeatable production process, I mean the optimized material parameters to the companies by using the HPC simulations. Our approach is, uh, first of all, uh, the companies uh, are synthesizing and analyzing materials. For example, the type of the graphene oxide and uh, how much, what is the carbon oxygen ratio in the graphene oxide? What is the mass percentage of the graphene oxide additive in the plastic? And then we are performing simulations and calculations based on the data they, pro they provide us. Then we are comparing theoretical and experimental studies. Finally, we have opportunity to update the experiments again to reach uh, better materials. What is the parameters we are optimizing? We are optimizing the type and the amount of graphene oxide, I mean the oxygen amount in the graphene oxide, Graphene oxide mass ratio in the epoxy graphene oxide composites, size of the graphene sheet, and the aggregation. The, the, this is one of the important uh, material problem: aggregation of the graphene, 
and of course the type of the matrix. These are the parameters we want to optimize by using this uh, synthesize, perform simulations, compare and update approach. Here you see our theoretical approach. Of course, it is not that easy. Uh, this process doesn't work that easy, but uh, we are just summarized here. I mean, even the graphene, graphene oxide modeling takes two months for us, but here we give only the, you know, uh, the summary of the computational approach. Our main method is the first one, the workflow of the large scale molecular dynamic simulations. First of all, we model the graphene, graphene oxide, and of course the uh, polymeric matrix. Our polymer is the epoxy material, which synthesized by the uh, reaction of the amine and epoxy material. Then we are building many cell, large scale cell product construction, minimization of the cell, selection of the mo uh, most probable lowest energy cell, large scale MD simulations, which is the most important part, uh, part and which uh, uh, performed at the HPC center. Finally, mechanical properties, interaction energies, and the reinforcement is determined by this way. In addition, we also performed more accurate density functional theory first principle calculations, which will support, uh, which supported our molecular, large scale molecular dynamic simulations. Uh, our HPC setup, usually our system including more than 30,000 atoms, uh, simulations performed under periodic boundary conditions for uh, five nanoseconds. We use two CPE nodes, each with 20 processors, and each simulation took less than 24 hours. It will take 10, more than 10 days in the uh, uh, of course, with the conventional PC, this is the uh, main contribution of the HPC center. Our simulations takes less than 24 hours. Uh, and also we uh, perform test GPU makes it much better. These are the uh, some HPC uh, infrastructure. Uh, I mean the e information about the processors we used in our simulations. Yes, we. Uh, this is the one node. This is the GPU performances, and as you see, 31 hour is the one CPU node. We use two nodes, and our simulation takes between here. Our optimization showed that two nodes with the 20 processors give the best time. In one day, we can get results for 30,000 atom cells which includes uh, both graphene and the epoxy metal. Here you see our plan. These are the tests given uh, in the uh, proposal. In the test one is the project planning. Test two is the uh, preparation of the graphene oxide samples, which is our additives. Test three includes another synthesis step which is the production of the growth graphene epoxide nanocomposites with different graphene oxide ratios task four is the main simulation part by using hpc center we model our growth graphene oxide epoxy materials and we simulated in task four task five is another industrial cost contribution they provide us the different uh, graphene oxide epoxy nanocomposites and they provide mechanical and thermal test results uh, in, in this uh, part. In the task six is the uh, production of uh, data uh, and the final simulations which we control the epoxy structure uh, i mean uh, epoxy ratio and we uh, then uh, we move to the results and achievements i will introduce now tests very shortly then give results 
first one is the project planning during the 15 months every two weeks we have our meetings we shared uh, information regularly uh, industry uh, altidynamics and nanography provided us many data at the beginning of the project how to model the system HPC center give us uh, the of course uh, install the NAS softwares and give us the necessary information we can use and uh, we are as uh, HPC experts in the Middle East Technical University we prepared inputs and submit jobs and analyze them task two including the synthesis of the graphene oxide with different oxygen content by using oxidation and reducing agents this is a chemical process they use hammers method it's a traditional method chemical method to, uh, to convert graphite into the graphene oxide they control the ratio of the uh, oxygen by using the oxidation agent uh of course it is uh, hard to control but they reach 10 different types of material uh and i will introduce them in a method they this uh, nanography company is very experienced on this produ production of the graphene oxide and they pro uh, they provide us many different of uh, graphene oxide materials with different oxygen content I want to introduce some of the graphene oxide materials here. Uh, gra graphene, pure graphene is insoluble in water, but at some percentage of the graphene oxide functionalization, it becomes soluble, it becomes more processable, and it becomes a much better additive material. In test three, they mix with graphene oxide with the epoxy nanocomposites by using different graphene oxide materials. For this purpose, they use the three roll meal mechanical stirrer ultrasonic bed were used to disperse graphene oxide in epoxy. Ultrasonic bed, because the dispersion of the graphene oxide is very important parameter for the material. Mold designs were made by the Alti Dynamics company, which is the leading SME of this project. Uh, of course, the, they have the, due to the very strong adhesion of the material, molds are modified by making the secondary molds to produce the final mold, which is a non-adhesive material. We need, we need these molds because later these materials will be tested for the mechanical and the uh, thermal properties. Then they produce samples by using these molds. Composites were cut by using the water jet for mechanical and thermal characterization. Next, after they characterize their material, they produce the data to the HPC experts in Middle East Technical University. Task four is the simulation part, which I took part. Uh, we simulated the uh, systems, uh, this uh, pre uh, prepared in task two and task three. Uh, and I want to give some detail about the simulations at the first simulation, we test the effect of type of the graphene oxide material, size and aggregation of the graphene oxide material, and mass percentage of the graphene oxide material. What we tested is interaction energy between the matrix and the graphene oxide, which give us the important information about the reinforcement. We also tested the Young modulus, which is because we are in uh, the mechanical property of the material is important for us. I want to introduce models, for example, pure graphene model, graphene oxide with 6% oxygen, 13% oxygen, 18% oxygen. And these are exactly the models produced by using the data provided by the nanography and altidynamics company. 
Here you see summary of the all simulations. We controlled the oxygen percentage. We controlled the matrix by using the epoxy amine ratio. We controlled the oxygen percentage, graphene oxide uh, type and mass percentage. Graphene oxide dispersion, for example, completely dispersed. Here you see yellow graphene and aggregated graphene because uh, SCM and the TM electronic electron microscopy image showed that aggregation is very important problem. And finally, we also tested the effect of the size of the graphene oxide. Here you see one of the simulation. This is the four layers of graphene oxide sheets in the epoxy uh, material, uh, and it is in equilibrium. This is the system we analyzed. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Task five is another. Task five is the mechanical characterization outsourced by the Alti Dynamics. This step is important because they provide us uh, some important data. For example, company that are mined that 2% graphene oxide additive and the 20% data cross-linker in the matrix provides us the best mechanical properties. Uh, and in task six, six, this is what we tested. We controlled the uh, uh, epoxy matrix. We calculated the epoxy polymer graphene oxide ratio by controlling the cross-linking density of the epoxy polymer. We did this by controlling the amine and epoxy ratio. The amine is data, epoxy is DGEBA. This is the industrial material used. And we also validate the system. The density of the pure epoxy should be 1.1 gram per centimeter cube. And our simulations perfectly reach to this point. The effect of epoxy hardener ratio uh, is controlled. Young modulus and interaction energy with the graphene oxide is determined. Here you see main achievements. As a result of project planning, we uh, come to a very good point uh, and the roles of the, each company, university and the HPC center is determined. In the second step, Alti Dynamics and nanography synthesized graphene oxide with different oxygen content, then prepare material by using uh, by using uh, uh, different uh, synthesis methods. In task three, they prepared the real nanocomposites, which we model in task four. We successfully improve the mechanical properties we observe effect of each parameters in task five they understand uh, they try they continue the characterization and they also check the cross linking density and we tested this cross effect of this cross linking density also in task six, six. we optimized the epoxy amine ratio uh, at task six. Now I will show you some of the uh, uh, details of this achievements. As a result of task two, which is the synthesis step, synthesis of the graphene oxide, 10 different graphene oxide products were obtained. These products are will be made commercial, commercially available for specific applications. And five of them were selected for this experiments to mix with the epoxy matrix to prepare uh, uh, nanocomposites. And they provide uh, this data for the modeling and simulation. In task three, six different nanocomposites were obtained by using 20% cross-linker and uh, the results are significant companies reached up to 53 uh, 
53.92% mechanical property improvement, which is very significant. Epoxy is already a strong material. Epoxy has a 3.5 gigapascal Young modulus, and it, uh, the mechanical property is improved 50% uh, more by adding the graphene oxide. In task four, we take role, uh, we uh, perform simulations. What we have done is we check the mass percentage and functional group percentage, uh, effect of my functional group percentage on the graphene oxide epoxy nanocomposites. What we have done is we showed that oxygen content, when the oxygen content on the graphene oxide is high, uh we have to use low amine ratio in the matrix which means that low oxygen ratio in the low polar groups uh, ratio in the matrix we concluded that uh, nanocomposites can be prepared by using different methods if you has if you have a high oxygen ratio in your graphene oxide you can use different epoxy if you have low uh, oxygen content graphene oxide, you can use different epoxy to reach uh, better dispersion and mechanical properties. Another result is we reach 10% oxygen ratio is the optimum oxygen ratio in the graphene oxide. We showed that after this percentage, it doesn't matter if you increase the oxygen percentage because after 10% uh, oxygen ratio, mechanical properties doesn't improve significantly. And these here you see uh, some of the simulation status and the density perfectly match with the experiment. It is 1.1. Here you see 2%, 4%, 6%, 8% cells. We also check the effect of the aggregation, completely dispersed, two graphene aggregated and four layers of graphene aggregated. We showed that this is very important parameter, 32% mechanical uh, decrease by aggregation of two graphens and mechanical properties are decreasing 50% if we use four layers are stacking stacked let me quiet my phone yes another parameter is the graphene oxide size we showed that e although larger graphene oxide improving the mechanical properties significantly smaller size graphene oxides are dispersing better in the matrix and we finally reach an optimization we tell the companies it is possible to reach 8% graphene additive if you completely disperse. Remember, they can reach 2% uh, the maximum mechanical properties. The reason is the aggregation of the graphene oxide. We tell the companies it is possible to improve more if you, this, uh, if you find way to dispersed graphene oxide, 8% can give much higher. Of course, if the, there is a for, uh, aggregation, the mechanical properties again significantly decreased. In test for mechanical and the thermal characterization successfully completed, and they showed that 20% data cross-linker with the 2% graphene oxide uh, they reached the higher mechanical properties. However, our simulation set, uh, the companies, our simulations co concluded that it is possible make, uh, epoxy graphene materials doesn't reach their perfect capabilities yet, and companies can improve the mechanical properties by adding 8% graphene oxide if they completely disperse it. And uh, task six, we showed that uh, epoxy amine ratio is important and epoxy amine ratio controlled by using the 
uh, optimal uh, graphene oxide 53.92 uh, improvement is possible. Here, uh, how our HPC simulations supported. For example, for the low oxygen percentage, 5% of the oxygen, when data DGBA epoxy uh, amine ratio, uh, amine epoxy ratio is increased, mechanical properties are decreased because the oxygen percentage is low. However, for the high percentage oxygen graphene oxide, mechanical properties can improve if you use uh, if uh, the companies use higher data ratio. This means that the 5% graphene oxide, 5% oxygen, including graphene oxide, and 18% oxygen, including graphene oxide, giving completely different trend for the epoxies. This means that there is not single way to obtain successful composite material, Every graphene oxide requires different uh, uh, epoxy matrices. Ex what is our exploitable output? Our output is we can uh, reach more precise, less iterative, less hands-on solutions because already uh, our HPC simulations showed that 10% after 10% of, of the oxygen content in the graph and it doesn't matter so we give some uh, parameter we showed that eight percent graphene oxide is as a mass ratio is possible if they completely disperse it so we saved uh, a lot of time uh, from the hands-on solutions we can make tailor-made nanocomposite with higher efficiency accuracy cost competitive and enhancement of mechanical performances are up to uh, 54% and they also observe weight reduction in the material. Uh, for the customer's product quality, cost saving, accelerated research and uh, product development is possible and potentially new opportunities because now we have new graphene oxide and we know how to uh, mix them we can in the future it is possible mixing with uh, new matrix materials such as polyurethane and uh, what alti dynamics our leading sme learned from this uh, experiment they engage first time with the hpc solution and it worked we uh, provide them many parameters for the materials optimization. They develop new technical ca capabilities leading to novel product development. We enhance uh, the company knowledge base through the active utilization of HPC. This acquisition, acquisition of skills through the experiment now enable the Alti Dynamics company to harness this knowledge to uh, for the new solutions of the new problems and uh, they can open to the new market sectors Reduc reduction of time is another important factor nanography is the raw material producing the uh, our graphene oxide and epoxy materials they know uh, how to, of, the, of course, they already know how to produce graphene epoxy composites, but we provide them molecular detail and know how. They know innovative ways for sales of its products. They have new graphene oxide materials. They have enhanced product quality with the enhanced mechanical properties. They already strong in the market position and now they are aiming to strengthen it. Of course, they uh, can they can also harness HPC uh, solutions during uh, this experiments to attract new customers, knowledge based and refined skill set, and they can enhance uh, their uh, material properties by enhancing the HPC solutions. Here Can you, you see, of course. 
and uh, of course uh, Truba uh, provide us the HHPC infrastructures they uh, they also gain experience how to uh, collaborate with the SME and large scale raw material production company business benefits are uh, we are expecting 15% reduction in the design cost 125 uh, thousand euro per year in the reducing waste and uh, raw materials of course the accelerating the time to market of the materials i mean it will take two years uh, we are aiming to decrease the uh, research development to the market mm -hmm. uh, nanography producing 600 kilogram of graphene oxide they are aiming they are aiming to 600 kilogram in the next year but graphene oxide is a uh, highly promising material and they are aiming four tons in four tons in the next three years uh, period. Uh, of course, uh, they can decrease the cost of the material and they, they can make some specific materials with specific oxygen content by using this project. Uh, these are the repeatable cost effective superior properties uh, based on the customer needs. And we are, as a Middle East Technical University, uh, we make a lot of research on the composite material. We have a publishable results now. We have one master's student's graduation. Uh, I will skip this part. We have social and environment impact. For the dissemination, we have three conference presentation, one master thesis, one journal preparation. Of course, we have social media pre uh, presence now. And I want to thank you, HPC, for all these processes because now Alti Dynamics have a new material, new work positions, nanography have new products. As Middle East Technical University, we are uh, uh, make the novel research area in the epoxy graphene materials. And thank you, HPC Center, for providing infrastructures. I also want to take thank you the FF4 project because. During this project, Bettina uh, uh, and, uh, of course, all the other uh, Claudio during the review process supporting us. I want to thank you, everyone, take part in this project. Adelas and all others, thank you very much. So, yes, um, my name is Elena. I'm Associate Professor at the University of Vigo, and I'm also a researcher at the Galician Center of Mathematical Research and Technology. And I'm here to present the experiment 1120 SIMTEC, HPC simulation of metal power segregation in the manufacturing of gold wire. The panels of this project uh, were uh, CDE, it's, it's an small as an E, it's the inducer that's called the manufacturing process. Uh, we have also on board computers, HPC provider, and we have also Tip Mega as HPC expert, and also the, we are the technical coordinators. And all the team members are here Francisco Suero, Elio, Eloy Crespo, Nicolás Rico, Alba Royce, and Sebastián Bouces. So, mm -hmm. uh, the outlines of the talk will be the standard ones. We will deal with the motivation and objectives. We, we will present the challenge and the solution on HPC approach. We summarize the main outcomes and we'll, we'll present the expected impact of the solution. So, um, Thedia uh, code wires are used as precision additives in different steel and foundry industries. You can see here the code wire they manufacture. And inside the, the wire, there is a mixture of fine metal powder. So accuracy and uniformity in composition are extremely important in the final product. Here you can see the manufacturing process. On the left-hand side, we have uh, an, a sketch. So here on the conveyor belt, we will have a material flow with a mixture that it's, it goes down into the final hopper. So it falls down into the final hopper. And here on the, at the center, we have a picture of the real final hopper 
and the region that it's, uh, we can see in more detail on the right picture. We, are, we can see the hopper outlet, we can see the moving open wires, so the red arrow indicates the, the direction of motion of that open wire, and we can see how the metal powder is fitted by the hopper outlet. So this is the manufacturing process. So the problem, uh, the study found that there is an undesirable segregation during the initial steps of the wire thinning process, so the first portion of the final manufacturer coat wire is unsuitable because it has a high homogeneity. And because of that, when 45% of the coil length produced is rejected. And that has, uh, the, the estimated losses can be valued in 375,000 euros per year and also in uh, generation of material waste. So the objectives of this project is to reproduce the actual core wire filling process using physics-based models in HPC environments to understand why the initial segregations occur. So we, they can redesign the process. So segregation in the final product is reduced and with that we contribute to a more economically and environmentally sustainable manufacturing process. The challenge, uh, we are dealing with a mixture of two, um, two metals. One is the metal calcium and the other is iron of very different densities. So the density ratio between both of them, it's uh, if, uh, a factor of five. And this is the one that we studied in this project. Its metal has its own complex granulometry. We don't have only a unique size for its metal power. We have a range of different sizes of particles. And we are dealing with very small particles. So we can find particles as small as, as uh, 43 microns. So they're, they're really, really very small. So we take into account that. Uh, we find that uh, more than 200 million of particles are inside the hopper at the initialization of the wire filling. So even with simplifications that we are, we are going to show you in a moment, the HPC simulations are very challenging for this problem. So the project concept, concept was first to select um, um, an open source uh, discrete element method, a discrete element software. We checked its capability and also we, we checked the post-processing capacities and, and we programmed some of them. And then we ran some, some prototypes experiments, both as uh, so the, the experimental prototypes and we run the counter numerical part of that experimental prototypes. So we can calibrate all the material parameters that are involved in the discrete element model. So after having that calibration done, then we can go to the next part that is the simulation of the real manufacturing process that we will vali we validate with the results they have in the company. And once we have ready the segregation prediction tool, we will test different conditions for that uh, manufacturer process so we, they can optimize and minimize that segregation they observe. So the project timeline was this one, and as you can see, until month eight, month nine, we were still calibrating the discrete element model material parameters, and from month eight on, we started with the simulation of the industrial process and the results are included in the last months of the project. So the physics based model is a discrete element model modeling its individual particle and the particle interactions were modeled with the viscoelastic nonlinear hertz milling granular contact. The simplifications we made in the model, the first one, of course, was that the, the, the particle sizes were scaled by a factor of five and the total mass was conserved. At the beginning of the project, we modeled its metal with a unique harmonic site, but finally we had to change that approach because um, the results of the, the segregation results we have in the prototypes, they showed us that if we want to retain and have obtained numerically realistic segregation results, we have to retain the complex granulometry of its powder. Even if it's a scale, we have to retain the, the granulometry of its metal powder. So that's um, 
um, ha this had a huge impact on the simulations because the smallest the, the, the particles are, the smaller is the time step we can use uh, for the simulation. So more particles are need to be simulated, more smaller, smaller particles need to be simulated, so, and also the time step is going to be very small. Um, the HPC approach, uh, as this uh, project was intended for small SMEs, uh, we tried to work with free open source software and we chose Lights Public, uh, that is an open, a free open source, so uh, any SME company has access to this tool. Uh, however, the scalability performance was very poor because the, there is a tool that is the dynam dynamic allocation. So it is uh, um, uh, a tool that uh, assigned processors to where the particles are during the simulation. It's not available in the public version. So because of that, the scalability performance was very poor of that, of that free open source software. The result was, is, was that the HPC provided compute computational hours were quickly consumed and we had to look for a solution and we asked to access to the Spanish uh, National Competence Centers and they, they granted uh, 4,500 kilo hours of computation and they were granted in competitive concurrence. So we, this was essential to finish um, correctly this project. Uh, so here you can see the simplified prototypes. You see a picture of the simplified prototype experimental test. And here you see the numerical counterpart of them. The calibration of the model material parameters. We had to calibrate a lot of, um, of, of parameters involved. Uh, was done by adjusting or, or, or texting uh, which parameters gave us the same angle of repose and the same discharge time that we obtained in the real experiments. With that, we calibrated uh, the parameter models and we had to run, of course, a lot of simulations and also a lot of experiments in the uh, company uh, to, to, to make this calibration. Uh, because of the, what I told before, the, when we correlated the segregations observed in the piles in the numerical prototypes with the experimental segregation in SEDIA, we found that the only way to mimic the segregation they have was to include in our model the, the granulometry of its metal powder. So that should be a retain, and as I told you, that complicated a lot uh, the the simulations. So the industrial problem, the numerical simulations of the industrial process uh, has more than 1.6 million of particles in the end. It has more because there are particles that are coming inside of the hopper and there also there are particles that have to be simulated that go through the wire. So this is only what can be inside of the final hopper. So in fact, we're dealing with more than 1.6 million of particles in our simulation. Um, so, as the problem is huge, uh, we first uh, tried to solve the problem with this computational domain where you can see the beans for each metal powder and from these beans the metal powder are, are mixed here and then the metal, flow, the material flow comes into the final hopper with this region. So we had to reduce the computational domain. This is the final uh, computational domain we solved. And of course, we have to characterize how it's uh, what's in the inlet of this computational domain. So, uh, Thedia made an experimental characterization of the material flow at the domain inlet. You can see that the characterization was not only geometrically done, but also in composition. So, they observed first, uh, first thing, they observed that the material flow at the inlet is not symmetric. So, they have more iron and the right hand side and in the left hand side. So, and it will have some consequences also in the, in the final segregation as we will see later. So for the industrial problem, we tested different uh, configurations numerically. First, we test different hopper outlets just to check that the scaling we are applying to the size of the particles were not uh, represents correctly what is happening in the outlet of the hopper. 
uh, we also test um, a, a deflecting plane to put our deflecting plane inside of the of the of the hopper device just to see if this uh, if the impact of the particles here against this lateral wall can makes the mixture more even. Um, we also tested different conveyor velocities. We multiplied the usual conveyor velocity by a factor of five to test if this mixing it's better for for the segregation we observe in the in the wire. And we also test um, uh, the real inlet material for con con configuration versus asymmetric inlet material flow. This could be the real, as we explained later, that was characterized experimentally by SDA. And also we tested what happens if we have a symmetric material flow of the inlet. That would be the, to have the reference content of ion particles on both sides of this, uh, of this uh, triangle. So, as I said before, um, the time step uh, to had to be very, very small because the, even the, the smallest particles, as you can see here, are very small. So, two, two micro, microseconds was well, the time step we could use in these computational simulations. And you see the, the horrible amount of time that takes one uh, its industrial simulation to run. So for its con configuration, the, the numerical we we did we did the numerical study of the segregation inside the hopper. So we divided the hopper in three sectors: X1, S2, and S3. You can see here the this red arrow indicates again the direction of motion of the wire. Um, and we analyzed the segregation inside of the hopper for each test we ran. And we also, for its configuration, we test also the segregation inside the wire. So in these uh, pictures here, you can see the length of the wire. Um, uh, for its, this is an, a snapshot in that specific time. We can see the content of iron particles that we see inside of that, of that uh, wire in the numerical simulations. We also studied the distribution uh, in <clears throat> presented by sites of particles also inside of the wire. So well, the main outcomes first, um, well, let, let, we have a look to the how was discharged the flow inside of the hopper. So you can see here a snapshot of this discharge flow. As you can see here, this is the initial uh, the initial time where we colored. Uh, differently depending on the stratification of the particles and we follow this uh, this stratification uh, along the discharge of the flow and you can see here how sector one that is this one is a preferentially fills the wire in in the discharge so uh, the, the, the particles to come out and more particles come out from the hopper from this region as well as you can see here in the next instance. Um, this is uh, the same but making vertical regions and you can see this is the initial instant of, of the discharge and you can see how as time passes by you can see how particles are coming down from this sector one preferentially. So this will have also an effect in the final segregation, as we will see later. Uh, then, um, coming to the Hopper segregation analysis, we found that asymmetries in the inlet material flow persist, persist in the Hopper. So what we find is that sector one has 20% more of, of percentage of particles of iron than sector three. So there is a big asymmetry between sector one and sector three. Okay, this is with the real inlet material flow. However, in, with a uh, simulation, we have the, the symmetric inlet material flow. We observe that uh, the content, the percentage of ion particles in sector one and sector three were nearly equal. So, so the, the asymmetry is, uh, it persists in the hopper um, if the if the if the um, 
material flow is symmetric. We don't see that as symmetry in the uh, in the hope. So when we deal or we analyze the segregation inside of the wire with the real using us in like condition the real inlet material flow, we observe you can see here two different snapshots of this wire, and we can see that the percentage of the iron particles inside of the wire are much higher than the reference value. This is what it is suspected for the client. And you can see here on the right hand side the experimental results of the company. So they observe, yes, that in the FET meters they have much more uh, particles of, of iron in inside of the wire. So the first thing that we see is that um, the numerical tool predicts what they observe in the, in the industrial process. That is good. So uh, another main outcome of the numerical simulations is when we do the simulation using asymmetric inlet material flow conditions is completely different. We have um, uh, the segregation is, is, is diminished and we see that we are closer, not, not exactly, but closer in average to the reference value. So that means that the symmetric in the material flow would be what uh, we are looking for. So uh, summarizing the results, the asymmetry in the inlet material flow generates an asymmetric feeling of HOPA. Sector S1 has more percentage of ion particles than sector 3. Also, the HOPA sector S1 preferentially fits the wire, and the combination of the two, these two effects makes that there is a, a higher presence of ion particles in the wire. So if the material flow is symmetric, this effect is diminished. Well, that's a great conclusion of the work. And another uh, main outcome is that no other configurations, conveyor velocity, defector, plate, whatever we try, mitigated the segregation in the wire when the, we were putting us, uh, we put in as inlet conditions the real inlet material flow. So there was no other way to mitigate this asymmetry in the in the material flow. So we also observed uh, another another thing was that at the beginning uh, of the production we have more proportion of the tightness and heaviest uh, ion particles in the wire but um, a few seconds later this effect uh, it's, it's not observed. So uh, the possible actions to mitigate the segregation could be first to act at the inlet, on the inlet material flow. The first thing that we can make is to swap the material bins to create the opposite inlet material flow. By doing this, this is the real material flow, we, if we swap sides by swapping the bins, that would mean that this region, the right region that preferentially fits sector one, could be the one with less uh, percentage of iron, while sector sector three will be fed with this region that will be now, if, if it, this is swamp, would be the one with more, more iron particles. So maybe this can mitigate the effect that we observe in the numerical simulations and also in the industrial uh, problem. Another possible action is to, to create uh, new, to test new hopper designs. Uh, so for example, reducing the hopper length in the wire direction of motion. As we saw that sector one was the one that preferentially fits uh, the wire. Uh, we can try to, to see if new designs can mitigate the fact of the segregation. Um, this is the original hopper and this is the direction of the motion of the wire. And these are two new designs proposed by Thedia to mitigate this effect. So no, no less or smaller section one appears in the, or, or the effect is smaller in with these new hoppers. So uh, the expected impact of the solution, the splittable outputs for Thedia, there are, with this tool, this numerical tool, they have detailed knowledge of the process. The process is very complex, it's very, it's very hard to, 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 to know what is happening inside of this process and, and within that this numerical to give them a very useful information and knowledge of what is happening. 
Within MAGA, this, this expansion of portfolio services, we expanded to include discrete element modeling for different industries. Um, for compute, they've gained expertise in the use of discrete element models. The, the expected income from the business per perspective of the DO will be cutting losses of rejected material that are not at present is valued in that quantity. Uh, and they will reduce the waste. Um, the, the business uh, project will be done in two phases. They will first optimize the production for core wire with two, filled with two types of powder, that is more or less 60% of, the, of their production per year. And in the second phase, they will extrapolate the model to explore more complex products with three, four or more types of powder, metal powders. Mixtures. Uh, for the MAGA, the estimation of business benefits are around this quantity uh, for new the DEM simulation projects. And for compute, your new uh, discrete element modes codes uh, are included in the portfolio and the expected revenue of that quantity. Um, from expected impacts from the, for the society, well, here is this commitment to technological innovation and the implementation of key technologies in all areas of the company. It's the first time they use uh, numerical simulation to analyze uh, their production, their manufacturing. As well, so they, uh, they will be advancing technological innovation benefits uh, that will benefit so the efficiency and growth in a highly competitive market. Uh, the SIMSEC models uh, can be applicable to new mixtures of powders formulations, where it results in higher product, product quality and greater CDS customer satisfaction. And it will also increase the speed of commercial response. And thanks to innovations, so the expands operations and has the potential to create highly qualified employment in the populated regions in the future. Um, after the conclusion of the experiment, the Antimara plans to disseminate the findings to relevant stakeholders and industry professionals. Um, uh, we plan to, pub to publish the results in high impact research journals, as this one, and we are also. Um, also, we will have a master thesis in, that will be defended in a few days. Um, this knowledge sharing will contribute to the wider adoption of advanced technologies and best practices in the manufacturing sector, fostering innovation and progress in the field. Um, also, from the environmental point of view, so they recognize the importance of minimizing its environmental impact and aims to explore more sustainable and circular manufacturing approaches um, by reducing, of course, waste in this produ in its production. It has also more environmental friendly practices and promotes a greener industry for the future. And I would like to thank to acknowledge uh, FF for your HPC for the support we received and our HPC National Computer Centers for their two accesses granted. And I would personally like to thank all the team members for their great work and continued support in the project. Thank you, Alba, Francisco, Elo, Nicolas, and Sebastian, for all their great work. Thank you very much. Uh, the title of our experiment was Application of HPC Tools for the Optimization of 3D Printed Orthopedic Devices. And uh, I'm Yanis, I'm the CEO of Castprint, uh, who is the end user of the results of this experiment. And um, talking a little bit about our partners, uh, we partnered up with the University of uh, Latvia, which is the leading national higher education institution in Latvia. And uh, to be more specific, uh, we partnered up with the Institute of Numerical Modeling, uh, which were our partners who, who like uh, made all the scripts and uh, uh, did all the optimization. And uh, uh, Institute for Mechanics of Materials, who carried out stress tests uh, for both our conventionally made costs and the HPC created costs. 
just to make sure that uh, just to make sure that uh, the the newly developed casts are at least as strong as durable as the conventionally made ones and uh, also we partnered up with uh, Riga Technical University which was the which is the leading technical university in Latvia uh, and uh, to be more specific with our uh, Riga Technical University HPC center uh, that provides HPC resources and expertise in HPC software setups uh, this is also the largest uh, HPC provider in uh, Latvia and yeah, they have experience in providing solutions for both uh, academia and businesses. So, so these were our project partners uh, we, uh, that uh, worked together on this experiment. And then there's Castprint. Um, what what is Castprint? Castprint is a med tech uh, startup which was founded in 2016 in uh, Latvia. I am the uh, author of the idea and the CEO of the company. Uh, we provide uh, custom-made 3D printed uh, casts uh, to our partners, which are healthcare institutions, that uh, will apply these casts to patients with fractures or, or some, uh, something like that. Uh, we are currently available in Latvia and uh, also available in london and hawaii and uh yeah currently trying to expand uh, here in europe more and uh, when talking about uh, uh expanding obviously we needed to do something to to make our proposals very attractive for partners so yeah um why did we why did we want to do this experiment? The challenge is that uh, cost creation has been uh, uh, roughly the same for the last 150 years when fractures are treated by plaster of Paris cast. And this is a time consuming process for the plaster to dry on the patient they are not too comfortable and uh, they bring uh, some skin complications rashes uh, skin dryness uh, as uh, uh, risks uh, for the patients and they are not very comfortable they are not too breath breathable and uh, you cannot get them wet because uh, then the cast will stop functioning so what we have done, we have created uh, custom-made uh, 3D printed casts made of polylactic acid plastic, uh, which we make based on 3D scans that our partners, the healthcare institutions provide. So um, what was the challenge? Why, why did we need to change something? Uh, the design process is time consuming as uh, most of the operations are manual uh, to, to this day and uh, we we have uh, decreased the amount needed uh, for design significantly by implementing semi-automatic scripts that our designers apply in design process but still uh, the design is a time-consuming process and um, there is a high uh, high uh, error risk due to manual operations uh, made by our designers uh, all these uh, 3d scans that we really use for for design they are created of uh, large uh, point clouds of uh, many surfaces millions of surfaces of uh, surface elements and uh, using regular desktop computers in uh, some cases they result in uh, permanently lost data in in uh, computer crashes and uh, stuff like that uh, due to image processing so yeah and uh, another thing that uh, we face is uh, the printing time which is actually the bottleneck of the process as uh, a cast would normally print for like 8 to 12 or even 15 hours based on cast time as as we can see in the previous slide we offer 
multiple cast types for wrist fractures, for thumb fractures, for other finger fractures, foot ankle fractures. So, so yeah, the bigger the cast, the longer it prints. So printing time is um, quite challenging and uh, quite limiting uh, for us as uh, of course we can uh, always buy more printers but that won't decrease the printing time uh, and in turn time to client meaning meaning that uh, if we have to spend uh, 15 hours on printing the cast will be ready not on the following day but on the day after even so yeah uh what we thought about the solution was that uh, parametric model optimization uh, would be the way to decrease print hours and uh, material used uh, and do to optimize the surfaces optimize the holes in the cost uh, that that would maintain uh, stability of the structure and hpc obviously which would automate most of the design process and uh, where where our designers can upload numerous tasks numerous models simultaneously not not spending time uh, on uh, each and every cost itself so yeah uh, we had a meeting with our partners and understood that this could be the way we could tackle our challenges and uh, yeah actually actually the outcomes uh, have proven to be uh, what we expected and even better uh, about the experiment uh, we have had a continuous collaboration with the partners we have met both in person and online every week every second week uh, since the beginning of the project uh, just uh, just to achieve the goals we have set and even even try to reach higher uh, results than uh, than expected um so uh, what what we did is uh, for the first task we divide we divided our experiment in five tasks and the first task was to find uh, some actual previous patients that wanted to participate here in our project that wanted to be a part of this and uh, who offered to test both uh, the old uh, the conventional made costs and hpc made costs and give feedback on the comfort, on the weight, uh, and then on the design. So that was the first task uh, we did. We contacted some patients. We got uh, approval, signed uh, signed waivers for the patients uh, to to enroll them in this experiment. And uh, then, uh, then our partners from University of Latvia did some stress tests that you can see on the left side of the slide. In digital stress tests when uh, uh, we that we used uh, as a basis for writing uh, automatization scripts. Uh, so that was task two, creating these scripts and uh, tr starting to experiment on on these. Um, patient uh, cast scans uh, in the middle picture you can see uh, we printed out a lot uh, of costs uh, on the, here you can see the conventionally made cuts but we also printed uh, the same amount of costs uh, for for hpc designed costs that uh, the institute um, for mechanics of materials uh, they broke them, they tested, uh, they performed the stress tests uh, on the costs. Uh, and on the right, you can see the HPC created cost. Um, and uh, we, re we return to these like the middle and the right picture over and over again. We kept tasks three and four open, which were like um, meant to to optimize all all these uh, holes made in uh, in the cast and optimize the structure optimize the thickness the infill all, all the other technical stuff uh we kept them open just to increase uh, the results and to get even better than results that we anticipated at the beginning um, we did this because um, 
while we got to the goal that we had set out for the experiment quite fast, we saw that um, we had uh, bigger, bigger improvements on larger costs, on larger scans. Uh, whereas uh, when um, talking about uh, children, about small size costs, uh, we did not uh, get as good results as we hoped. So, so we saw potential, we saw where we could uh, improve everything even further and kept task three and four open just, uh, just to revisit uh, what we have done and um, implement further improvements into the algorithms uh, that are used uh, in, in, in cost creation. So yeah, uh, but uh, we, we improved everything and got uh, where we wanted to go. Uh, if we are speaking about uh, the results achieved by this experiment, as uh, both uh, project partners, University of Latvia and Riga Technical University, are universities, they have um, quite uh, insignificant business interest in, in this experiment. Uh, however, for University of Latvia, they can uh, use the algorithms and uh, parametric uh, model optimization they have created uh, within this experiment with minor adjustments uh, for other clients uh, here in Latvia and abroad. And, and uh, as for uh, HPC Center of Greek uh, Technical University, uh, they can use the success story for to attract more businesses to show that uh, HPC is a valid, uh, valid and very good tool that businesses can actually use, and this is what they are doing. Also, they have uh, publication opportunities, and uh, I, I guess uh, one of one of uh, researchers from University of Latvia also did his master's degree on this. An experiment. Uh, so yeah, they have they have their publication opportunities. They have cl uh, client attraction opportunities, um, and uh, yeah, that's that's basically it. As for cost print, uh, our, our business impact is that uh, time to end user, meaning that the patient uh, will receive the cost, has decreased uh, by twenty five percent. Uh, this is mostly due to the fact that uh, numerous uh, costs can be designed simultaneously, uh, that uh, a lot of processes are automated, and that uh, printing time has decreased significantly by 25%. Uh, so, uh, due to the fact that less material is used, um, production costs uh, have... Uh, decreased by up to 15 percent uh, that goes together the uh, printing time decrease and the material usage uh, decrease and the increased production capacity uh, meaning that we can print more costs with the same amount of printers we have in the same amount of time that we have uh, we can uh, print uh, up by up to 25% more costs uh, alone. And uh, the expected uh, return on investment uh, based on uh, initial calculations uh, lies somewhere between 15 to 20% based on the fact that uh, faster, faster response times by designers uh, means uh, more interesting offers to partners abroad uh, increasing our uh, opportunities to export uh, what we're doing. Uh, if we're talking about social impact, um, we are able to decrease our sales prices by up to 15%, which means that our devices are can be even more uh, affordable to the public, uh, pub more, more uh, portion of the public can afford cost print uh, and afford uh, better recovery from their injury or fractures. Uh, we have increased accessibility due to the fact that in a lot of cases uh, 
the cast is needed uh, very very fast and uh, you cannot wait uh, for it to arrive for example for some uh, musculoskeletal complications or some neurological cases uh, when spastic is uh, evolved when when your i don't know the patient's hand suddenly starts bending you need to fixate or immobilize it quite fast and um, by by decreasing uh, this uh, time to end user by 25 percent as mentioned before uh, it is possible it is possible to apply cast prints in more cases in, uh, in more situations and more doctors can use it for their patients and obviously obviously the increased export opportunities uh, due to shorter delivery times on our side um, meaning in export we do not provide printing but we do provide the design and uh, preparation for printing and um, if we say that we need two two days uh, just to get the design to to an export partner in most cases uh, this is too long as it still needs to be printed and uh, post processed uh, at the other end so so yeah uh, reduction in uh, lead times is is uh, quite uh, quite uh, essential for export markets and we can see that uh, this is the case as we are already talk talking to possible partners in Australia and in other countries abroad uh, which see the benefits of uh, what we're doing. If we're talking about environmental impact, um, of course we're using polylactic acid plastic which is I guess the most environmentally friendly plastic there is. It is, it is made from sugar cane and it is biodegradable but still it is plastic and uh, if we can uh, reduce the amount of plastic use uh, by up to 25%, this means uh, less uh, plastic waste or less potential plastic waste uh, in the environment, which is uh, always uh, good and welcome. And uh, reduced printing times decrease the uh, amount of electricity used to, uh, to print these devices by also 25 percent so here you can see close up um, what we're doing uh, the on the left side you can see the conventional uh, conventionally created cost and on the right side you see the cost created by HPC with the help of HPC and uh, yeah uh, the feedback from our clients was um, and the feedback was quite good at first they didn't like the sharper edges uh, or the minimalistic uh, design however on later stages they found that it was just as comfortable and uh, just as good uh, so yeah uh, i would like to thank you for your attention i don't know where the pictures went on this slide but yeah uh, I would like to thank you for your attention.